is the top of the hour here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and you know what that means. It's time. It's time for the Digital Dash. I am your host, Javier Reyes, and for the next three hours, I'm going to be talking to you about all the stories, impressions, unabashed opinions, and little idiosyncrasies out there that exist in the world of pop culture goodness, and sometimes featuring only, I mean only, you know what I'm saying, only the most illustrious of guests. Today, uh, my friend Anthony Gabinelli stops by. Oh, I'm sorry. He's already here. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good. You're I'm doing good. good. You're doing good? It's always illustrious. Never like any other word. Yeah. You got a problem with that? Yeah, you got to stick with it. You know what I mean? You got to stay committed to the bit. It's a pretty good SAT word, not going to lie. It's worth a couple points. It's okay. Yeah, I think there's more better SAT words to describe illustrious, but it so is So saying solid. more better already <laughs> does not <laughs> give you a good SAT score. <laughs> Hey, man, I'm trying out here, okay? <laughs> I'm trying, all right? Uh, Illustrious does give you a lot of Scrabble points, though. Yeah. It should, so, at least. So basically today, today's, what's funny about the Dash, Anthony, is lately I've been struggling to have back-to-back weeks of the Dash. Before the break, I didn't have my show because it got preempted. Then during the break, I had my show. Interviewed Mr. Clay, you know, so that was fun. Then after that, I didn't have my show, so that was last week, and now we're back. Mm-hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry, we're going to have two consecutive weeks. Next week, we will be back. I know that generally you don't tease what happens next week when you're in the now week, but that's just what I'm doing today. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, today I wanted to talk with Anthony. We're just kind of just shoot. We're just going to talk. Because, you're going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I know I was. <laughs> I was going to say it for a second. We're going to just talk and, and and hang out, you know, like like good boys do. Mm-hmm. And because my ADJ, I thought I was going to have an ADJ, an apprentice DJ stopped by. That person's not here yet. You did promote it. I did promote it. Because I was told that I would have an ADJ. Amanda Cease. Yeah. Ooh. Lied to me. Again. No, I'm just kidding. I bet that the person just didn't show up this time, and maybe they showed up last week when I didn't have my show. But whatever. Maybe they stopped by. Who knows? I'm, I'm assuming things. We're only six minutes mm-hmm. into the show, you know? And then after that... Do we have a name of this person? No, I don't. No. I do not have a name of this person. The mystery ADJ. Yeah, Mysterio, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> If he comes in with a fishbowl on his head, I'll laugh my uh, my keister off. <laughs> I hate that you just said that. Um, off my tush off. And then at, at some point during the show, I'll talk about Kingdom Hearts 3, which I finished. I completed it about mm-hmm. a week and a half ago. I just want to talk about that because I have some thoughts. And you, you know what, Anthony? Not all of them are good. Actually, most of them aren't good. Thoughts about Kingdom Hearts 3? Yeah, it's a game. Yeah, I feel like I've been hearing like... For the wait, definitely wasn't worth it. It's like the Duke Nukem of its mm. day. Oh, it's it's not Duke Nukem level because at least Kingdom Hearts has things that might work game wise mm-hmm. instead of Duke Nukem, which should have stayed in the eighties where it belongs, because it's a really atrocious character that does not belong in today's climate whatsoever. And yeah, so we're gonna talk about that, but we're gonna take a little bit of a break and get we back and we'll talk with Anthony. It's, we just started. That's what I do. I always take a tidy break and then we come back. Okay. (laughs) All right. But yeah, stay tuned, guys. Listen to 90.3 WMSC Upper Bachelor. There we go. Okay, I'm back. If you reverse it all, I'm a good for you. How you doing, buddy? You sound constipated. (laughs) Hold on, I forgot to turn on your mic. What's up, buddy? I said two quality jokes and forgot to turn turn on my mic. Are you kidding me? Hold on, what's going on here? Why is this so low? Hello? What's going on? You're speaking. Speak. I'm speaking. I'm speaking to one. Oh, I put on the wrong one. I'm stupid. All right. There we go. Oh, my God. Now, I, I can hear myself now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I said two quality jokes, but your illustrious host <laughs> forgot to turn on my mic. I did. Not only did he put on the wrong one, but then he put on the right one. Mm-hmm. Two quality jokes that missed the airwaves, so I'll say it right now because they definitely heard your mic. Yeah. Unfortunately, they heard my mic, I guess. Exactly. So you couldn't see the mouse cursor on the screen. Yeah, my my glasses had too much like whatever. your sunglasses. My sunglasses. Yeah. So I, then I the said, Wolfman. so then I said, my glasses. I can't <laughs> see with my glasses, like a reverse Velma Dinkley, which I think is pretty funny. It's not bad. It's it's a solid joke, man. I'll give it. I'll give it a seven out of ten. I'll take seven yeah. out of ten. I'll take. I'll take it. Pretty good. That's, man. A, that's a C. C's yeah. get degrees, my dude. I don't know why that's a C though. Do you ever think about that? No. It's like, man, we're out here getting eight out of ten things right, 
but then that's like not enough. That's it's a like, what's going on here? I know that's a B. I'm just saying for some people, it's not enough. For some standards, it's not enough. Seven out of ten things correct. <laughs> You're batting 700. You know? You ever think about that? Why is it so hard to raise our grades, by the way? Uh-oh. That's a bunch of baloney. I don't math. understand how numbers work. Yeah, Why is math. it that you can get 17 A pluses and that'll raise your grade by one point? But then if you get one D, then you have an F for the marking period. It's like what's what's what what are we trying to teach? It's each other the outlier. Here? You know? I know, but we shouldn't make the outlier the norm. That's why it's an outlier. You know? Education's know. weird, man. I don't get it. It is. We need to fix this. You and I should fix this. The education system? Yeah, I think so. I don't want to do that. I think we could fix it. No, I'm too stupid to do that Mm. because of our education system. (laughs) Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe we're not qualified. That's possible, too. I forgot my other joke that I told, that I said about you. Well, really? Um, It was after the Velma Dinkley one, and I forgot what it was. Oh, man, what did you say? Did you say ski brother? No. You might have said that. I I can give a big shout out, a a big ski brother to uh, the father who. Yeah, send a snap to him right now. I did. Did you do it? He texted me back. Did you do the wolf man? No, I oh, just I said the, the one. Wolf I said man. the one that was the zoom in of your face. Oh, you got to do the wolf man. He said, "Get a load of the, of that jabroni." <laughs> you got to do the wolf man one. All right. Well, fine. I'll send him a wolf man one. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Digital Dash ninety point three WMSC up in Montclair. That's good. I'm being, <laughs> I'm being joined by. <laughs> it's so dumb. I'm sorry for freaking anybody out at home that's listening. The billions of viewers. Mm-hmm. And viewers too they could see me trust yeah, me that? they can see me they can oh. see me spiritually i think and then listeners mm-hmm. even more listeners because everyone's always listening you can hear it within the walls mm-hmm. you know i can i can hear it everywhere but yeah for those who couldn't tell um we're not really going to talk about anything right now we're just going to talk nothing yep. specific because i don't know where my adj is they might not be showing up so that means that a whole segment of the show is cut out it's cut out and i actually had a lot of news to discuss so I'm going to save that for a little bit later. We're going to do it a little bit different today, guys. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. It's been a while since I've, not a while since I've hosted my show, but it's been, it's been weird just picking it up and then not showing up the next week. He said, thanks, I hate it in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, isn't it? It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. It really is one of the best things I've ever implemented on the show, I think. I the think that's fair to say. The Wolfman? The Wolfman, yeah. It's, mm. This is the first time it's, it's appeared in a while, I think, too. I think I scared my last eight ADJ with it once, and that was it. And then, needless to say, they passed their test. So, perhaps the Wolfman is a good thing. I don't think it is. You don't think it is? Regardless. Regardless? Regardless. I don't think it's a good idea. So what have you been up to, man? Uh, not much. I did see. I did see a movie yesterday, <gasps> and it was Us. Oh, you saw Us? Please, I did see this us. is perfect. Please tell yes, me. Yes, me and Dominique went to go see it yesterday. Dominique, who? Who's Dominique? Dominique Evans. Dominique our, Evans. Our I managing know. editor. Our managing editor of awesome. the Montclarian. Yes. Who awesome. I'm trying to get on the show, actually. Also, my girlfriend. She said that since she's not going to be the first one on, the first woman on your show, she doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Wait, what? But she did say that since the last, uh, we don't have a newspaper meeting on the last Monday of the semester because- yeah. Yeah, that's what she was who talking about. Because who cares? Number one and number two, it's the graduation edition next week. Yeah. That next week, so yeah, there's something to go over. That would be a day to do it. Yeah, that's what she told me. And not only that, but I would also come on as well. Oh, dope. for like the entire because so everybody... I'm not going to go to my internship that last Monday. Uh-huh. Screw that. <laughs> but so everybody, now you know what my show is going to be last day of the semester. It won't last, be my last the last show, the last Monday. Yeah, because that's before finals week, right? P sure, yeah. Yeah, so I'll I'll have my show probably during finals week. That's what I'm yeah. gonna do. That'll be my my finale, mm-hmm. per se. But yeah, I mean that's what she was telling me too over over the Instagram messages. Mm-hmm. Strange place to message, but that's what happened. I mean, so she doesn't want to. Is that so? She was discouraged because she's not the first female guest in the show. Well, she said that she was excited to be your first female guest, along with oh, okay. Haley, possibly. Yeah. And then I told her that after your, I think it was your Valentine. No, it was your, it was a uh, one in March. No, yeah. it was like one a couple of weeks ago. I think it was before spring break. Mm-hmm. You had um, two uh, illustrious female guests on. Oh, I did. You did. Yeah, because every because every guest you have is illustrious. So when I told her that because she didn't know that when I told her that she kind of got mad <laughs> that she wasn't gonna be the first one. Yeah, I've had did her, did her noises and whatever. And she's then, late. Yeah, she's really late with this. I had 
them on over the summer. That was my first. Oh. Uh, the end of the f- season one of The Dash, where my two friends, Kayla and mm-hmm. Rada, they came on to do the MCU rankings. I reposted that a couple weeks ago. Maybe that's what she saw. And then earlier, last semester, like I think October been- when A Star is Born came out, I had Kayla and Alicia, or Alicia, Alicia? There we go, Alicia. I forgot her name for a second. Um, it's like weird. It's not Alicia. It's like Alicia. I think she, I think I saw the reupload. That one was. And then I told her about it. Had those two on. But thank so. you for making the situation worse. I'm going to tell her that uh, she hasn't been the first uh, female guest. In well, the- you know what you could tell her. You could tell her that clearly she just hasn't been paying attention to the Dash's schedule. You're not helping your cause you know? here. I don't care, man. <laughs> Well, because it's just a bunch of baloney. What's going on here? Oh, I, uh, I'm upset because I just realized two weeks ago I wouldn't be the first. You're Drake. Uh, female. <laughs> I'm Drake. Yeah, you're Drake. You're upset. Yeah, I am upset. Uh, but that's not true. Like, I've had female guests on before. I joke. Ab- no, I haven't had many. That's true. That's true. I did have my mom a couple weeks ago, though. That was awesome. In the radio station or on no, the phone? No, she, she called in to talk about the West Wing. Huh. And I know that just makes you so happy to hear me say You that. actually haven't said it in a while, so there's that. Oh, really? You my, remember, my, remember during class when it got brought up? Yes. Yeah, I just looked at you. <laughs> you looked my like next, you were going to punch me in the face. My new, that my new show that I'm currently really? despising, the new mm-hmm. show I'm currently despising because the father keeps talking about it, mm-hmm. is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> I've heard of this. Oh, my gosh. Because. Is this the anime? I forget. Yeah, it's yeah. An, number one, it's an anime. That's my main problem. Number two. Oh, how dare you. Number two. I've I've seen what, from what he's shown me, it's too stupid to be on television. <laughs> it is quite stupid from what I know about it. Like every villain in the show is named after, named after a rock band, and like whatever important plot lines are named after rock bands as well. I'm not. I'm just not about it. It looks too weird too. So my sister just texted me, Rihanna, want you to make me feel like I'm the only girl in the world. I guess she's commentating on the fact that I've had female guests on oh, the show before. There you go. My sister's funny. She sends really funny texts during during the show sometimes. Shouts to shouts to her. But yeah, I just um Yeah, so Dominique, I don't care if she's upset with me. Okay. Sorry. I've had multiple I've had it before. You should have paid attention to my Twitter feed and my Instagram and my Facebook. The book, as they call it. They mm-hmm. call it the book. The book the of Facebook. the book of no longer secrets. Is what I've heard that they call it. <laughs> National Treasure Three. Um, Facha libre, as they say in the uh, the foreign languages. Yeah, I'm sure they do. So, so tell me about us, man. You brought that up before. Yeah, us was. Uh, I will say. Mm. Let me preface this. Who'd you see it with? I just said with Dominique. Oh, I, I just I forgot. Maybe yeah, the listeners forgot. We yeah, didn't go dingus. on a tangent. All right, go go. Anyway, that's why she got. That's why we had a five minute conversation about her. Oh yeah, right, right. Okay, thank you, thank you. I should just have the show. Yeah, you really should. Can we switch have the seats? Show. Yeah, go ahead. No, I want to switch seats with you. All right, yeah, fine. fine. All right, during come the, over here. During the all right, cool. Let's go. You just come over here. No, I want. Wanna, no, I you want wanna... you to come over here. I won't touch anything on that board. I know, but someone's got to be talking. I will be talking. We'll be talking, but we'll be switching seats. I know. So just come over here, and I'll wait for you to oh, come over here, and gotcha, then gotcha, I'll go gotcha. over there. I wasn't following. Okay, hold on. Okay, there you go. Yeah, don't mess anything up, bud. You don't really have to do anything because we're we don't have anything to do. Take everything. Take all huh. your stuff. Yeah, I'll take all my stuff. We're doing a good old switcheroo. Talking to the mic there. Yep. Ah. Here we go. People get the headphones for you. People will see that we're doing this on the radio station's uh, camera feed over here. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna say hi. There we go. They will. Yeah. I hope they do. I feel very much in control right now. I like do you? this. All right, man. Welcome to the Digital Dash with your host Anthony Gabinelli. It's <laughs> It's crazy up in here. We uh, we're, we're switching tape. We're switching. Uh, we're turning tables over here, and uh, yeah. So I'm here with. I'm okay. Here with, I'm here with my stupendous guests. Hey. Stu- stupendous. Hey. That's the only kind of guests I have on the show. Stupendous. Oh, I see what you're doing. And you're gonna do the bizarro version of my, my show. My guest. My guest is. Javier Reyes. Hey, Hello. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. I've never been on radio before. Yeah. I'm a little nervous. So, yeah, don't worry, dude. Just talk and mm-hmm. just don't curse mm-hmm. or say anything racist. I will. I right. will. Not. Nah. Remember, remember, we're a left wing campus, so no Trump either. <laughs> okay. So, I saw us in theaters. Mm-hmm. Does it feel weird before I go into this movie? Does it feel weird looking from over there now? No. no? I've looked over here before. Okay. I've been on every, every corner. I've been everywhere, Anthony. I have eyes and ears everywhere. Good. 
Um, so before I get into this, uh, I've seen three horror movies in my time of watching movies. Really? In theaters. Okay. In theaters. Oh, okay. The first one's the first one was It Follows, and I saw that with the father, and that's how we started our our um podcast a couple mm. years ago. And I thought that was really good. It's probably my favorite horror movie of all time. Okay. It's more creepy than scary, mm-hmm. but it does it really, really well. Yeah, it's a good concept too. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a good um, metaphor for things. I kind of got some vibes from that from that movie in us too. But interesting. I'm, I'm not gonna. I really don't want to get into spoilers because it just yeah. came out, and yeah. I think it's I think it's definitely worth the watch. Uh huh. Maybe twice. I know your your hubby, your husband, um, Rob saw it too. I saw that on. Twitter. I saw he I saw he saw it on Twitter mm-hmm. as well. Which kind of inspired me to go see it because oh. if if he likes anything, I'm probably gonna like it too. That's fair because he's fair. my husband. So, um, then I saw uh, Halloween. Was it was it okay. Halloween after that? I saw Halloween, the one, uh, the new one, the newest one. Yeah. Wait, are you saying that you saw that this weekend or just in general? No, no, no. I saw that in theaters when it came out. Oh, cool. And I saw that with the father again. Um, that was pretty good. Um, I did see all of Hereditary with Dominique on a, I think it was on HBO Go or Hulu or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was something. That yeah, was I heard Hereditary. That's very a very, good. that's a very unique movie. That's the father's favorite movie of last year. It is very much so. There you go. Um, so I wouldn't. Say, that's not theaters, but like of the movies I've, all the horror movies I've seen, um, uh, in recent memory, I not a lot. But these are the three most recent ones, and probably the ones I will remember because I thought they were all very good mm-hmm. to varying degrees. Um, but going to this one, um, I was a little bit scared. I didn't. I don't know much. I didn't know much about this movie other than like it had like a seventy something on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. It got like a six point whatever on IMDb. Mm-hmm. But um, overall, I did think this was a lot better than uh, Get Out. Really. I th- That's high praise. I also don't like Get Out as much as everyone else. Okay. Is it a good movie? Yes. Was it scary? No. It was funnier than me, which it was like... Yeah, well, it crosses... Go- it has a line, yeah. Yeah, I think he... he Jordan Peele relies a lot on comedic relief mm-hmm. um, because of his background, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't so, call it so much as rely on as much as fancies comedy he, and stuff. More. He likes using it. Yeah, he likes using it more. Um, and in this one... Is no, I think he, I think he just tones it down a little bit. Mm. Excuse me, um, but I think it's. I mean, overall, it's just a great, great movie. I li- I liked it a lot, and I definitely want to see it again. What I like about Get Out is that it feels like a movie that you can kind of watch it in a multiple, like multiple kind of ways. You can watch it for just appreciating the filmmaking techniques. Mm-hmm. You can watch it for it being scary. You can watch it for being a social commentary, and like you said, you can watch it for being kind of funny at points you know what i mean now i do like seeing everyone's reaction to certain scenes in that movie because i think it says a lot about certain things when people laugh at certain scenes Mm -hmm. i don't know it's just interesting to see like if it's probably not a good sign if someone's laughing during like that the bingo not the bingo the the bidding scene (laughs) and they're just laughing hysterically at that but other points in the movie i think are intentionally kind of trying to be ridiculous and whatnot uh but i think the movie just works that's what i like about it i like that you can kind of watch it and i'm multiple ways mm-hmm. but you're saying us is a little bit less toned down when it comes to comedy yeah it's definitely it definitely tries to be more of the horror movie more like crazy more zany more that it's, side of jordan it's, peele you do definitely it's way more it's way creepier than get out i would say okay way, it's more of a creepy movie than it is a scary movie yeah that's true because this one feels less grounded in reality just based on what i've seen so you versus have not, you get have, out you which have is not just, seen this no i have not seen okay it. so um but Get Out was like just, it was creepy just because of how people were acting. This one looks like it's like there's a demon thing going on. I don't really know, what which I, is what's cool. What I appreciate about the advertising mm-hmm. campaign for this movie is that you really don't know what it's about. You just know yeah. that there are- There's different, like there's evil versions of them, yeah, of the family. and that's, that's it. it. You don't that's know, basically it. You don't know where they come from. You don't know their motive. You mm-hmm. don't know what's going on really. You just know mm-hmm. that they exist and that they're trying to- in like in any hor- in every horror movie fashion, they're trying to get them, um, <laughs> but I mean this there is a there is a bunch of twists and turns more towards the end of the movie, and you do figure out what's going on, um, and I I do have problems with it, and I think some of the problems are they because I think once you realize what's going on, 
it's kind of like, all right, well, why do they do it that way? Um, and I also just think that there are some, like, storytelling elements that aren't too good in it. But, again, I still think this is better than Get Out. Mm-hmm. I don't hold I don't hold Get Out to that high of a level, but I do think this is a movie that would mm-hmm. that should that could be worth the praise that Get Out got. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what let's see let me see what the ratings are for it right now. I think I'm curious. I think from what I saw last night it was a uh, it's got 94 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which so is it bumped up. Doesn't necessarily mean too much, but it's got an 81 percent of Metacritic, so that's very good. That bumped up. So I think that that's last time I saw Metacritic. It. I'm gonna check what Get Out had just because I'm curious. Uh, I think Metacritic's a better thing for judging, like, truly how great a movie is. Rotten Tomatoes is good for just seeing if it was good or bad. You know what I mean? Because on Rotten Tomatoes, they only judge. You get a fresh. Mm -hmm. Your thing is fresh if it's above, like, an average review or whatever. So, like, three out of five stars. Something could get 80 reviews that have three out of five stars. That doesn't mean that it's, like, a 90 overall. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what it can be weird. And also, Rotten Tomatoes is trash. That's another thing. The user ratings, anyway. User rate. Honestly, most reviewing aggregate places are just kind of bad. They just don't capture a lot Got of it. things, and especially user things, Got as it. you saw with. Got it. Opinions are bad. Opinions are bad. <laughs> Opinions are, are are quite bad, actually. Mm-hmm. They they have no place in this world. It's and on the show. Get Out had a eighty four. So yeah, it's it's like right around the same place. Um, but it's definitely extraordinarily. These are high like things for horror movies, and I think that's what's so remarkable mm-hmm. about Jordan Peele is that he makes smart horror movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what I'm excited for is that Twilight Zone thing. I know he's more of a producer mm-hmm. on that, but I'm excited to see what he does there because a lot of people have really compared him to um, his style, I should say, to a Twilight Zone type of thing. And I know that, uh, I think my dad said that after he saw Get Out. He was like, that felt like a, a, a Twilight Zone episode, just elongated and longer. It definitely you know? did now that I think of it more, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think is a strength. Now, how was how how were the performances? Because this is starring Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke. Um, uh, as the main people, how how were they? My husband's wife, yeah, uh, Peter Nuongo, does mm-hmm. do a good job, mm-hmm. a really good job. I don't think she's ever given a bad performance. No, and she hasn't given many performances. She's she picked but her parts uh, really well, like really well. She hasn't like, she's a movie star, like for sure. Mm-hmm. She's a a lister, Academy Award winner, one of the youngest ever, especially mm-hmm. for um, one of African American descent. That was for and twelve years of slave. That was for twelve years of slave. Okay. I forgot when she won that though, but you know she's super talented, multifaceted. Two thousand twelve, you mean? So it was what definitely after two thousand twelve she won that award. Yeah, that was like twenty. I'm gonna 15? look that up, but no, twenty, not twenty fifteen. Either way, whatever. But um, she hasn't been like in a ton of movies. She was in that, and then she was. Black she had Panther. Star Wars. She had Black Panther. She had the the creature forgot, in Star Wars. I forgot she was in Star Wars. Yeah, I kind of a little bit of a waste for her. I think you could do more it's with just, her, but it's fine. She people, was cool. People now, now that they're making a lot more Star Wars movies, people are just getting those roles just to say that they're in a Star Wars movie. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so. Soon we're going to see uh, Chris Pratt just jump ship, and he's going to be in Star Wars. Who knows? I don't think so. No, I he think won't. He I think won't. I think after. It'd be funny if he did that. I think after Guardians 3 or whatever they do when. He needs um, Guardians 3 to come out now. Yeah. Chris Pratt stock is going down fast. Because the church People thing. are just kind of over it. The church thing, but also. I described them the other day when talking with my mom, and she clearly didn't know what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. I described him as Justin Upton, where he is started out, blew up on the scene, immediately like a great A-lister, right? Mm-hmm. You have that year when Guardians came out in Lego Movie. And then you would assume it's only going to get better from here. Because he was in Jurassic World. Yeah. And- but then it just remains, he's good. He's a, he's a pretty good actor. And it's just kind of stayed that way. I feel like Justin he's- Upton for years has basically just been what he was his rookie year. And he got slightly better, but then it just stayed that way, which is a great player. But it never went to. Uh, you would assume that it would get better. That's it's how I describe Chris Pratt. Yeah. That he never. He has. I, th- I think that what we're seeing right now is what we're gonna get, and for for years. I think what he does is great. I think he has. I just think that's. I don't it. think he has range. I feel like he plays the same character to an extent. To an extent, I think he plays himself to an extent. He plays the bold white guy. I just don't think that you can. I don't see him definitely ever taking a part that's out of his repertoire mm-hmm. there's other actors that play a character but i could see them trying something different even keanu reeves of all people i could see trying something different i'm just being john weird. Wick, by the way john wick looked good was, i saw a tweet that was like man that horse thought that all the violence and action was real and it still kept going through with it like a champ because it's a horse that was funny but i think that yeah the, the pratt the pratt the pratt stock like, is definitely way down i'm selling it at this point 
I don't know if I want to sell yet because it's still medium and it's still he's still a movie star. There's no doubt about that. I'm gonna that. sell it just because something's about something's bound to happen before Guardians Three, where something that involves the church. Maybe he says a comment about it finally. Mm-hmm. Um, but at this point, I'm selling the stock. Yeah. I'm and I don't sell stock at all. That's my dad's thing. So I don't know <laughs> if I'm talking correctly. My dad's thing too. I um, think. I, I'm still buying, I'm still keeping my stock if we're talking about just movies and whatnot. Because I think what he does is great. I just think it's never going to get necessarily better. I don't think this is going to be like mm-hmm. an Oscar winner in the future. I think what you see is what you oh, get. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's going to win you an know Oscar I mean? in the future either. I don't think he has. Like, like other actors like Leo started off great and then kept going. You yeah. know what I mean? So he's like the. He's the elite. He's, he's like the, the Mike Trout. You know what I mean? Yeah. He started great and then just kept going mm-hmm. to a Hall of Fame caliber thing. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. this guy's just Justin Upton, which is good. I don't think we should dog him for that. We could dog him for the church thing, but mm-hmm. I don't think we should dog him for that. I do think that he needs that Guardians movie to come out, though. Mm-hmm. People need to love Chris Pratt again. I don't think people love Chris Pratt right now. They're just like, yeah, he's fine. You know? They just need to see him in another movie. They need to see him in another movie. The Jurassic Park, he's going to have another one coming out. Jurassic World. Jurassic hate- World 3, whatever it's called. I hate those movies. Yeah. I hate the first I don't- one. I never just wanted- Jurassic World? The first one is terrible. You know my take on that, right? I think the first 30 minutes of that movie is absolutely perfect. Like, a perfect, perfect movie. I think the first, like, 30 minutes is perfect. Because it recaptures and shows you the, the 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 vision that the millionaire guy had. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I love that they have the music. And it's just, like, it just shows you the park and how it looks. I think the first, like, beginning of that movie is absolutely perfect. After that, it becomes too blockbuster for me. I think it's fine. product placement. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I think that the, the Velociraptors fighting against the, the T Rex were just comp- way too Hollywood. Like him driving, it's not like atrocious for me because I do love the beginning of that movie. I just think it works. I love seeing the kids are excited to go, and you're seeing like w- mm-hmm. this is it. This is this old movie that I think is fantastic. I love the original Jurassic Park, and then you see it be like realized. This is what his dream was. There's just something really nostalgic and kind of emotional about that that I appreciated. But then after that. Eh. Not as much. And I never saw the new one that came out last summer. No, they did I. I don't know anyone who did, honestly. Although it might be like a dumb fun rental. Dumb fun rentals are worth it. I like doing that. I just haven't done one in a while, but mm-hmm. it's it's worth a rental. Not every movie do you have to go out and see. Same thing with video games. Not every video game do I have to go out and play. I want to play games, but sometimes I'm like, eh, I'll, I'll save my money for something bigger. Mm-hmm. You know? You excited for Avengers? Of course. Who isn't? Who isn't? Yeah, who isn't? I finally saw the trailer on Wednesday. I really tried to not watch the trailer just to keep myself pumped up. I think it did a good job of not. Yeah, this is me. a perfect trailer for you to watch. Like, it doesn't show anything. Yeah, because it just it just shows them that they're getting ready to do something. Yeah, that's you don't it. Know, you don't know what they're gonna do. No one's seen Thanos yet in this in the trailers. They only showed like his arm in that original reveal trailer, like with the glove, like yeah. walking through some the gauntlet number one. Yeah, the gauntlet, whatever. <laughs> Thanks. Like walking through some grassy mm-hmm. plains, but that's it. Yeah, you're right. And then they showed his armor on top or whatever. Like he's like Kobe with the Lakers, like yeah. hanging up his jersey in the Raptors. I think that that's what's so great about. It. Yeah, you should have just asked me. Like, I was worried. I woke up when I saw that the trailer, a new trailer came out. Yeah, and I was like, oh no. I hope that because I love that they didn't show anything in the first one, but I couldn't resist. I watched it. And I was like, oh great. Basically the same thing. The only thing they showed is yeah, Captain Marvel's in it. At the end, that was Captain cool. Captain Marvel's in it now, and now they're in space. And now they're in suits that say Avengers and stuff on them. Yeah, and it looks like Stark's back on Earth. Although the report and came out that they some of the footage is, is fake, just like huh. what they did with Infinity War. Like Infinity War has that shot of Cap running into the of the screen, and then the Hulk's behind him. Yeah, and that was never in the movie, mm-hmm. which is kind of that's a misleading thing to show. Like the Hulk doesn't show up in that movie except at the beginning when he gets beat so bad that he doesn't yeah. want to show up for the rest of the movie. And Which really this my only one, problem we'll see the, what happens. That's really my only problem with the movie, hmm. too, is that there's no Hulk. Can you pass my water? Uh, yes. Thanks, um, buddy. I do have five minutes left on the show before I have to go, <gasps> but I also oh, want to no. bring up this one cool thing I'm going to be doing later today, later tonight. Mm. What's for, that? For cross-platform sports, a class that Ooh. I thought that you would have totally been a part of because you and I were in sports society. What time? What, what, what day was it that it was supposed to be? It was like Thursdays, it's right? Thursdays, 4 yeah, to I, 6.30. I guess I just decided I didn't want to have as many classes. I should have done it though. It sounded fun. It, it the workload is really easy. Like mm-hmm. I think it's like it's it's the same workload as sports society and media. Mm-hmm. Um, but today, me and two other people that I'll be driving mm-hmm. to uh, will be going to cover the mm. New Jersey Devils versus the Buffalo Sabers game at Prudential Center. We have, we have to go to the press box. 
Whoa. Their credentials. Whoa. We get to go we get to go early to the game. Whoa. We go, and after the game's over, we get to go down to where the coach has his interviews. We get to go to the locker room and interview players. What? Yep. I should have done this class, man. I, I don't told, even like hockey and this I'm in. was this was the dream class yeah. that I wanted, like when I heard that this was a thing because It's just a lot of writing basically, right? It, this is actually this is this is totally your up your alley because it's really? just it's just an Instagram story or okay. just a bunch of tweets. Okay. Um, I'm gonna probably do both if anything. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably just do like scores and uh, end of end of uh, period updates, um, and I'll probably do some video interviews with some of the players on Instagram and then tweet and then Twitter. I'll have on my main Twitter mm-hmm. at Ant Gabs. Um, yeah, you guys can follow him if you'd like. Mm-hmm. It's uh, if you saw the. Pr- Tweet uh, that you promoted this morning. Yeah, um, my, did? my yeah, it's there. What your tweet? My no, my handle. Oh, oh, you're saying what yeah. I promote? Okay, okay. Yeah, so you can follow me for that. Um, I'll probably have a little thing beforehand. I'll probably tweet it out hours before the game and be like, "Hey, letting y'all know I'm doing this for class. Mm-hmm. I think this is awesome. This is like the dream I'm living right now. Mm. Today, I'm so pumped to go because this is what I've been dreaming of since I was a kid." I go to the, get the. This is so rad, dude. I go to the games and I look up there. And I'm like, I want to be up there, and now mm-hmm. I am. Man, I should have taken just. I should have just put in another extra class. What's wrong with me? I don't know. Just, I didn't need the credits. That's why. This was three credits too. So I didn't need it. So. What What classes do you have now that you probably could have dropped for this instead? My podcast one, but I didn't want to drop that. Because. Because reasons. I like yeah. podcasts. And because I, and with my internship, that that gives me my other credits. So I didn't need it. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but if I did, I definitely would have taken it. But you need a news lab and multimedia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's been going well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's been going that's a, a certain gra- way. That's how you graduate, my guy. I know. I know. I just shouldn't have saved them for one semester. Yeah. That's that's kind of rip on my part. But that's what I'm doing today. Dude, and that sounds fun. I'm excited. I'm I, excited to see you tweet and stuff. I can't wait. I'm gonna put. Should I put back the notifications on for you again? I remember I did that for a while. For me, yeah, just because I tweet, I tweet like every two weeks. I know that's why that's why I put on notifications. For yeah, people. it's something that like either it goes really well and I get like twenty likes from all my <laughs> friends and stuff, or I say something and maybe gets like two. What do you think was your best tweet? <sighs> my best tweet. That's a good question. What What was the, um, drop top? I think you had something of that ilk, the hip hop drop top. You know, like I don't know how to explain it. I don't remember. You had I a think, really dumb one a while ago that I tweeted just a dumb picture of you and replying to it. And this is when the father thing started. Yeah. Because then he made the joke about <laughs> those jokes on Twitter that, oh, oh, well, well, I bet Javier doesn't show up at three o'clock in the yeah. morning saying it was because he was studying <laughs> and all this dumb stuff. It was great. That's where I the, think, the um, father partnership started. I think my best tweet. Remember that one uh, meme on Twitter was going around where like people were just biting foods that were in wrappers or that are still in the wrappers. <laughs> no, I do not remember this. So people were biting like Kit Kats, but okay. like they never took the wrapper off, but they would just bite through the wrapper and eat Man, it anyway. This, that internet's so weird. But like they probably wouldn't eat the wrapper, obviously, because it would just kill them. But like people would just bite food that was in wrap that was like packaged in a wrapper without taking the wrapper off, and they just tweeted like. So do you guys like your Kit Kats with or without the wrapper on? Mm. And that would be just a picture and get, like, thousands of likes. So I did the same thing. Oh, I, I do remember this now. So yeah. I did, I did mine with my with a York Peppermint Patty. I think I got, like, 15. <laughs> so stupid. I, I don't that. know. Maybe the um maybe my pin tweet might be my best one. Just, like, the, my first – just tweeting out my first article from the Montclarian. By the way, uh, for my sister, hockey is MMA on skates. Just go watch MMA. No. <laughs> what a shot. I, at this point, and that's <laughs> what this, a shot. At this point in the game, I would say it's less MMA and more. Yeah, it used to be like that, right? Yeah, like it used say, to be like goons, but they I, got rid of that basically. Yeah, I would say like the '90s and early 2000s yeah. were the last time we saw like hockey that was like there's still fights, was, but it's not. You you'll be lucky if you saw one fight a game. Yeah. Now now it's more. I respect now, that. Now there's more just scrums that happen after uh after a, a, like a mm-hmm. stoppage in play like a go- like the goalie just saves the puck and just holds on to it or yeah. prior to a face off. As someone who doesn't really watch hockey all that much, I do watch the Stanley Cup playoffs because I like that just anything feels like it can happen. Yeah. More than any other sport, with the exception of maybe football. I was saying I say like baseball. That baseball. Yeah, Base- baseball too, but baseball's long. That's the thing. Baseball's baseball's really long to get there. And I just like watching only the Stanley Cup playoffs. And I respect that in hockey, they like don't sneak attack each other. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, we're fighting, we're fighting. Okay, cool. 
Like yeah. it's like a, an agreement. Like they push each other and like, yeah, you want to go? You want to go? Yeah. Right, and it's, go. but and then in baseball, it's like, let me hit some guy from 90 feet away. With Football, a, it's like from behind. Basketball, Lord knows it's all shoving from behind. Mm-hmm. And if you're, my, yeah, if you're, my sister says there is zero fighting in Olympic hockey. You know? Yeah. Cause it's, yeah. Cause that would be really bad. Probably. I think there's, I think there's different rules in Olympic hockey than there are in the NHL mm-hmm. because you know, yeah, it's not just teams going mm-hmm. up against each other; it's entire countries going up yeah. against each other. And I also respect that hockey kind of legislated out or whatever. That, if I'm not mistaken, there just used to be players they'd call up from like D three or whatever the minor league is just to fight the other team's best That's player. Sports society, you're bringing up again. Yeah, yeah, that used to happen. Um, and I mean, I knew that before that mm-hmm. that class, but that's what I was familiar with, and I'm glad that they kind of took that out. Yeah. But believe it or not, I don't like fights in sports, but I respect that this one's just like, yeah, we're doing this. Not like in, I hate the fights in baseball most of the time because it's some cat pitchers are the biggest cowards in all of sports potentially. Like I've said that before, they're absolutely ridiculous. They're like, oh, I'm so big and bad. <laughs> I'm behind seven players that I throw something at you from 80 miles an hour. It's basically an assault. Let me throw a 95 mile an hour he- heater towards yeah, your butt. Yeah, it's like cool, dude. Like, how about like, you actually say something like to me right the here? The fat part of your butt. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it feels more like a, I would I imagine it feels more like a hard punch than anything. Yeah, not to mention they throw it at people for the most arbitrary and non-consequential reasons yeah. inconsequential reasons like oh he he's done well against me so i gotta hit him now it's like what are we doing dude if i was what is manfred is it rob manfred right yep. now yeah i would have freaking suspended you remember ozzy albies or was it ronald lacuna last year he was like on a mean hitting streak for the braves yeah, and, and then i forgot who hurt. was just hit him and it, hurt him. And it like yeah and it hurt right. and he was out for the rest of the game i would have suspended that dude who did that for like the rest of the season i mean like we're done like, there's no reason to be doing this. You're done. That's it. Same thing with Bryce Harper yeah, a couple years ago. It was Hunter Strickland who hit him, mm-hmm. basically because he did well against him in the playoffs three years ago. I'm like, all right, you're done. Enough. We have to – because someday, one day, this is going to happen because baseball is stupid. Someone really good is going to get hit yeah. for a stupid reason and be out for a long time. Like, they're going to get their, like, jaw broken by this. I feel like... That's what's going to happen. And then I feel because like they don't suspend people for it. We have, There is more command with um, with pitchers when they're, th- when they're throwing that fast at yeah. some people. So I think they know where they're going to throw it. I don't think anyone mm-hmm. is going to be that insane to throw it at someone's jaw. I'm telling what, you, man, someone's going to do people it. People throw it at people's heads. But like, or I think, they're going to break, like, like break someone's wrist or something. Yeah. Someone's going to – a star player is going to be out for like – a month or something like that because something stupid that another team did, you know? And mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. What are we doing? I remember the Acuna thing. The whole Braves dugout got out and they were just like, like they weren't even, they didn't even know how to be mad yet. They were going to be upset, but they didn't mm-hmm. even know how yet. They were just like, are you kidding me? Yep. He's just doing well, so you just hit the guy? <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. And if I was Manfred, I'd be like, all right, you're gone. See ya. That's it. We're, so, we're not dealing with this. Oh, you're, you're heading out? Just talk yep. for a couple more seconds so I get yep. over there. So this was fun. I, uh... I appreciate everything that I appreciate the hospitality here, um, and uh, uh, this is the only episode of the of uh, the. Uh, I keep wanting to say my former podcast, but it's not that. We talked about that too the other day. We bring did. It, possibly no, uh, me and the father possibly bringing it back once oh, we're out. The the, the cinema dash. Yes, the one where the show that you took your show's name. That's from. That's not true. I unintentionally did that. It's from Drake, man. Sure, it's from Drake. Don't listen to him, everybody. He's 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 just confused. He's a confused lad. I'm Arby's. What happened? Any final words? Um, you got anything for uh, us? Spread the love. Spread the peace. Respect women. Uh, respect everyone. Uh, I mean, I'd be do, I'd be down to do this every every uh, every Monday now. I kind of liked it. It's fun, right? I yeah. told you because at first you were just, like, I ain't getting up at just, ten. Just <laughs> just because now I just wake up at eight thirty. Yeah, it's and I'm fun, like that's right? without that's like without. Uh, Cool. So now yeah. I have a guaranteed guest spot if I need it. This is great. Yeah, let me know. But like, I'll let you know. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Just because the ADJ will be probably be coming some week, so I have to You're. fit everything and figure it out. But I'll text you always. Yeah. You know me. You're. It'll be see cool. Ya. I'll see you around, man. We'll have more organization next time too. Yeah. All right. See you around. That was Anthony Gabinelli, everybody, talking about everything. We really just we completely just we shot our shot. I can't say the word that I want to say on air. Obviously, we were just talking. Talked about us, the movie. Which I want to see. I'm, 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 I'm excited for it, but I fear that just like Get Out, it's gonna be one that I get to late, later than everybody else. I don't know. It's just a weird, confusing time. And then next week, or I think it's the week after, has like Shazam coming out, which I'll be seeing hopefully. I just think that 
it might get lost on me. I'm going to try, though. I'm going to re- try really hard to see it because Jordan Peele makes good stuff, and I like new ideas like us, you know? And I like seeing new ideas do well at the box office and whatnot. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really try and and do that. Uh, we also talked about baseball for a little bit. We were just, We really just talked. It's been a while since I've had a guest on to just talk, you know? Usually I like talking about specific things. This time I just decided, eh, let's just let's just have Anthony on for a little bit. We're just gonna mix it up today, you know. Um, but yeah, guys, we're going to take a little a little bit of a break, and when we get back, probably at eleven, uh, we're gonna do the opening dash <laughs> because the opening dash is huge this time. I decided to save Anthony because I, you know, I gotta spread my things out since I don't have an ADJ. It looks like who might show up later. By the way, who knows? I, I don't know who it is. I've just been told that I have a new apprentice DJ to train and whatnot. And I'd love to introduce that person who will be joining us for the next few weeks. But for now, we're just going to do the opening dash. There's a lot of news that happened because it's been a couple weeks since I did my show. It's actually been a, yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I did my show. So we're going to run through those things. And there's a lot. Like I said, we have video games. We got some, some cool entertainment news. And I'm just going to dive deep into all that stuff. Oops, I did that by accident. <laughs> Whoopsies. Uh, sorry, sorry about that random noise guys it's it's hard to operate the board sometimes and talk at the same time and figure out what you're doing and then answering a text message it's, it's it can be a little challenging but yeah um stay tuned guys listen to digital dash we're gonna do the, the big news roundup it's gonna be a lot of fun going solo going lone wolf here in the studio right now we're gonna go lone wolf so stay tuned guys you're listening to 90.3 wmsc upper montclair claire sorry just fidgeted a little bit there we're back. Sorry to whoever was trying to call before. The phone's not working, it seems. I was just notified about that. The phone, for some reason, is not working on the other other line. I think I could hear, or at least they can hear me, but I can't talk back to them, so that's a little bit weird. But hey, it's okay, because I don't have a guest right now. It's just me, alone, in the studio, just, just doing my thing, you know? It's exciting. So let's do it, guys. We're going to do the opening dash in the 11 o'clock hour. First time we've ever done this. Let's start with the movie and TV news. This is going to be fun. I'm really excited for this. we got a lot of stuff to cover. First, let's get through some trailers. All right, it's been a while, so my apologies, but I want to go through everything that's happened over the last week. I know that, you know, I did my show last week, so I didn't get to co- cover everything. But here are some of the biggest things. Like I said, with some of the trailers, we had four major ones that I saw that I was aware of that happened this last week for movies and TV. First up, Toy Story 4. That was a big deal. Very big deal, actually. I'm excited. It's coming out June 21st. Disney, of course, taking over the world. They have everything coming out this year. And Toy Story is one of those movies that you... A lot of people don't want this fourth movie. Or I don't want to say they don't want it. They just... They definitely don't need it. I don't think we do need this movie. I think that the Toy Story trilogy is golden. I think it's perfect. I think it is one of the great trilogies in the history of movies that I can think of, honestly. Up there with with the Lord of the Rings, and that's that's the, like the only one that comes to my mind at the moment, but there, there's there's not many. I mean, not even Godfather can can lay its, its claim to fame there. You know, not even Godfather can say that it had three phenomenal films. And Toy Story, they arguably get better with each one. I'm 100% convinced that I will be just in tears by the end of this movie. It looks exciting just to see these characters back. I really didn't think, I really thought they were done after three. I thought that they were going to be like, all right, we're done you know, this trilogy's golden, that's it. And the trailer really has a lot of emotion in it. You know, it's a lot focused on Woody, you know, and, and moving on and what's the, what's the next step of life and th- those type of questions. Mm. And this Sporky character, I think that's his name, or Forky, I'm sorry, Forky. Is he Forky or Sporky? I don't know. I probably should have these things written down, but I'm still ex- excited to see how that movie plays out. Definitely one of my most anticipated movies, along with many others. I'm sure that this is just, it's a guarantee. There's not much to say, really. Um, I'm pro Toy Story 4, though. I'm, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be good. I don't think that they would, like I said, they had this golden trilogy. I don't think that they would take a chance on another one if they weren't sure that they had a story to tell. You know, I think they would end it. Because Toy Story 3 ended in a way that was very climactic, and that was it. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm, slightly cautiously optimistic but I th- I'm, I'm convinced that it's going to be good I just think Pixar does good stuff um, but more Disney stuff the Aladdin trailer came out that one's coming out May 24th what's funny about Aladdin is that it was getting I don't want to say bad press but it wasn't getting the most ravenous of approval 
um, when they released that one clip of Will Smith as the genie for half a second in his like blue genie form. And instead, this new trailer really showcased a lot more of it. And then they, of course, had the the split second of A Whole New World, um, that fantastic song. And I think we were just in. I thought it was a great trailer. Some people were, were slightly convinced that um, – well, one second. Everyone was a little bit convinced. Some, I saw someone was saying they intentionally put out kind of mediocre looks at the movie. That way, when the actual trailer came out, everybody would be over the moon for it. I don't think that's true. I mean, it could be true, though. I think it's going to be – I'm wondering because there's so many Disney movies coming out this year, especially – you know what I mean? Especially animated kind of family friendly movies. You know? They have they have Aladdin coming out, they've got the Lion King coming out, they've got which a Lion King we still haven't gotten a official, like real big look at. Um and I'm I'm expecting that that'll come out soon. Pro- probably in time for Avengers. I, I assume that a trailer will probably be attached to it for that. Same thing goes for Star Wars. And I'm wondering like which one is going to be the best. I think Lion King is just gonna make billions. Like that movie is gonna be absolutely huge. I think people have been waiting for not waiting for a live action rendition of the movie, but they're they're really excited to go back into that world again, um, and I think it's going to be good. But with with Aladdin here, I'm I'm not I can't I can't get a, a pulse. You know, I think people are excited, and I think that last trailer was really great. I'm not worried about the movie at all, really, aside from the fact that Will Smith hasn't been in a good movie in a while. So I'm hope meaning like he's been good, but any movie he's been attached to lately just hasn't been very good for whatever reason. And that's kind of a shame because I still think Will Smith's one of the great like talents we have. Um, I remember when it used to be like every summer he would have a fantastic movie come out. You know what I mean? Not like an exceptionally well done movie, but like a blockbuster would come out every summer. It'd be like the Will Smith holiday, basically every July, every July ish type of um, time period and period. There'd be like a great Will Smith movie that comes out. And I'm hoping this is that next one. Like I said, it will be releasing uh, May 24th. Whew. I don't know. I liked it. I'm wondering what everybody else thinks, though. I like the trailer. And I think people, I think a lot of times people get way too caught up on how a movie looks sometimes, specifically how a actor or character looks, whatever it is. So I think people were way too down on the whole movie as a whole just because Genie looked a little bit weird in his Genie form. Like, really, guys? We're really going to start acting like this is going to be terrible just because of one look at it? I just feel like that never turns out well. And people judge movies for completely ridiculous factors. Same thing goes for, like, a lot of the DC movies. People would get caught up on the actors that they picked for the roles. I'm like, the actors are fine. You know, it's the everything else that matters. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, was not, was not a trash can because Ben Affleck wasn't a great Batman. I actually thought he was quite good. That wasn't the reason it was a bad movie. It's because the story made no sense, and it was trying to jumble 800 different things together and it was taking itself way too seriously for what type of material it had that's why you know so let's stop judging it based on you know these superficial kind of factors in my opinion anyway uh, another trailer that came out was once upon a time in hollywood this is coming out july 26 don't know too much about the movie except for it is starring leonardo dicaprio and brad pitt as well as uh, margot robbie it takes place in the 90s kind of era of hollywood and just it's it's some person in a stunt double basically and it's next quentin tarantino movie it looks cool my one of my really good friends john ostrowski who might be listening in i don't think he is right now but uh he's a big leo fan and i've always been a big brad pitt fan so we're gonna have to form a a temporary alliance for this movie very excited it doesn't seem like it, it feels like it's a little bit different not as violent looking as a lot of tarantino movies have recently you know with the hateful eight and with uh, what was the thing that came out before that? I think it was I think it was Django before that, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I mean? Like a lot of shooting, a lot of violence. This one looks like it's going to be extremely dark in terms of dark, like black, dark comedy. And I'm excited for that. And I'm excited for a movie that kind of looks into that. They had Brad Pitt like as a the stunt double, or whatever, fighting against Bruce Lee. It looked like it was it was really cool. And I'm excited to see what he does with this movie. It feels like a little bit of a a different aesthetic for Tarantino. That's just that's just me though. There could be, like, a, a, a crap ton of violence. Like, who knows? We'll have to see. Um, and then the next trailer, Stranger Things Season 3. That's coming out on July 4th. Oh, boy. Who buddy. Great trailer, let me tell you. And they've kind of been teasing it throughout the, the, the months. And they've been leading up to Season 3. It's taking place on July 4th. This, of course, a Netflix exclusive. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. I thought the trailer with the music was just... It's just one of those great trailers. Uh, I was talking with my friend John, actually, like I mentioned before last night about it and he said that it, it was showed a little bit too much for his taste 
which I can understand. I think that it wasn't too bad just because it's it's it, as a show, you're allowed to show a little bit more since there's so much more material and so many more hours that have yet to be shown. I'm what I love about the show is I've said this for a while is I think it's one of those things that can't fail. Like it's going to take a lot for the show not to be received well, because I think the cast and characters alone are just so good, whether it be Hopper and you know David Harbour as, as Hopper or Millie Bobby Brown or Noah Schnapp, whatever. I just, and Finn Wolfhard, all those guys. I just think all the characters are so likable and every actor in it is just, is really good. And I think just having those characters again, people are just in. You know what I mean? Story matters. Don't get me wrong. Story matters. The pacing of matters. The way it's shot. Everything. All the filmmaking geeky stuff we can get into. But I just think character-wise that they have something special with just all these guys and and gals just being really likable. And I'm excited to see where they take it. Um, That's really all I have to say about that. July 4th is going to be fun, man. Going to be celebrating with my friends, hopefully. And we're going to binge Stranger Things. And and what I hope. This is also a new thing that just came out like, like an hour ago. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, the posters were released, and that movie comes out July 5th. So I will most definitely be trying to see that on like at night on July 4th. That is what I'll be doing. Everybody else is like, oh, you should be going out and partying, man. It's like, no, I am partying. I'm going to see Spider-Man Far From Home. If you think I'm going to wait, oh, stop it. That's how I'm celebrating July 4th. Going to binge a, probably not the entire thing of Stranger Things. I don't like binging shows, usually. There's only a certain type of show that I like to binge, and that's usually shows that, one, aren't long, or things that aren't serial necessarily, or like anime. Like I can binge watch like Naruto, which I've watched like a million times for some reason. Like I can do that. It's it's got to be something I've seen before, and then I can binge watch most of it. You know, I can't binge watch something like Game of Thrones, which I actually just this past weekend finished the first season. Yeah, I know I'm really far behind, and I'd have to go absolutely crazy. I have to go ham if I were able to catch up season seven. My goal is just to catch up to, to at least watch the Red Wedding arc, which I believe is season three. It's an episode called The Reigns of Casimir. Don't tell me what happens. Not that I'm that I should be that I deserve to not have anything spoiled, but it doesn't matter. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up to the show. And I know I have an idea of kind of things that themes that happen in this show just based on seeing promotional art and trailers and footage that certain characters are not going to be alive. That's fine. I just want to see how we get there. And I want to see like cuz I remember when the red wedding happened and I remember Twitter like just having a meltdown like like someone actually died in real life like the president or something like that's what it felt like that's the equivalent of what the red wedding was like on twitter but anyway that that was a little bit of a side tangent uh so yeah july 4th is going to be great stranger things season three and then we got spider-man coming out the next day and i'm going to try to see it on july 4th it's gonna be a great day i'm really hoping to make that quite a day and of course avengers endgame that's the last trailer i don't want to talk about that too much because i imagine it's going to come up at some point i do want to mention though that I mentioned this earlier with Anthony, I thought it was one of the best trailers I've seen for a blockbuster like this in a long time, just because, you know, I've seen some people complain, all the culture writers I see out there that I love, and they're they're awesome, complaining about, you know, it was all just reshoots, not reshoots, it was was old footage, you know what I mean? Like, get out of here. Like, why are people freaking out over this? And I'm like, well, you guys are the same people, and I I agree with this sentiment that movie trailers show too much these days, you know? Especially for blockbusters. They don't, they don't keep enough secret, and I like that this is arguably one of the biggest movies that will ever come out. You know, this is the ending of, like, a big saga of Marvel movies. I know they'll continue, but still, the Infinity Saga, as I've been told it's, it's called, all the movies up until now, it's going to have a big, satisfying finale. And for you to basically just not tell us what it's about at all, it's really exciting stuff. I love that they're not showing anything. Why bother? You know? And... <laughs> My friend just sent me a funny tweet. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited for that. I think that we this just doesn't happen, you know? I think Star Wars, actually, I know people hate Star Wars now, or at least they pretend to hate Star Wars now, that, that when Force Awakens came out, that was another trailer that was just excellently well done and didn't really tell you about what the, what story was going on. Not only is this the Avengers trailer not showing you what's what story is happening, they're not even showing you, like, action. There's very little action, and I love it, and I'm super excited for it. Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it takes. It's going to be great. I'm super excited for it. But the reason I, w- I didn't want I want to talk about it was because reportedly what I've seen, I don't really have any firm sources on this, is that the movie's runtime hasn't been officially announced, I don't believe. I could check this later. But three hours and two minutes. That is reportedly the runtime of Avengers Endgame. And depending on what kind of person you are, you're either, you either rolled your eyes at that or you're like, yeah, fine, whatever. I tend to be of the latter. I think that I don't mind how long this movie might be 
especially if it is really set up to be the finale that it is. And that makes the the fact that the trailer didn't show much even more interesting. That you have a three hour movie potentially that you're not showing us anything for. I just think it's fascinating. I think that there's never really been anything like this. I remember when the trailer came out and I woke up. It was at like nine o'clock in the morning. I woke up and I just saw someone post like a picture from the trailer and I was like, oh man, like they, they're showing more. And I was nervous. Of course, I wasn't going to not see the trailer, but I was nervous to see it because I was like, please don't show anything. Please don't show anything crazy. I can't help it, but don't show anything crazy. And they didn't. They really stuck by that. And it, it plays back and it connects back to the reports that earlier, like in the year where they were saying the 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 marketing for Avengers Endgame is going to be unlike any of the other Marvel movies. And they're only going to show the thir- first 30 minutes in any of the promotional um, material. So that's really exciting. Not long now, guys. About a month, actually. A month and a day away. April 26th. Can't wait. Uh, but moving on to the next story. More Marvel stuff. Marvel is producing a What If series for Disney+. Plus. And this report comes exclusively from Flash... Or Slash Film, I'm sorry. Uh, we have exclusively learned that Marvel Studios will be producing a new television series for the Disney Plus streaming service based on the popular What If comic book series. The new animated show will be overseen by Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios, but the stories will not be canon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, like the comics, the animated anthology series will provide stories that explore how the Marvel Cinematic Universe might have unfolded if key moments in its history had not occurred as they did in recognized canon. For example, one of the episodes will adapt What If Volume 1, Number 47, which explored the idea of what if Loki had found the Hammer of Thor. So so I'm, I'm, I'm not fully aware of what kind of plans they have for this in terms of what type of stories they'll adapt. They say they're not going to be canon. I'm wondering if they're just going to adapt actual Marvel what if stories, what if comics, or if they're going to do what if animated stories based on what we've seen in the movies. Now that could be really cool, honestly. I love that. And this is a really smart, I think, move by Disney for their streaming service to have some, you know, not, I don't want to say original content, but some an interesting spin on what they have with Marvel instead of just some of the Loki and Scarlet Witch TV series that they're also reportedly developing. I like that they're going to try and explore the animated realm of things, you know, especially with the success of Spider-Verse. There's, there's a lot of room there for them to have good anime movies. The DC comic stories, they've been great animated wise. They've had incredible animated films. Absolutely phenomenal, you know? And, they, and then Marvel's basically with Marvel characters, I should say. I know it was a Sony Pictures movie with Spider-Verse, which I watched twice. Or not twice. I, I watched it once and started it a second time uh, this past week when I got it on Blu-ray. And, man, that movie's great. But I'm really excited to see this. I know there was one What If comic that I love where it was What If after the Civil War arc. This is this is comic books, the Civil War arc, where it was one on Spider-Man where instead of Aunt May getting shot by one of Kingpin's henchmen after he rev- Peter Parker in that comic reveals his identity to the world and what happens is the kingpin sends a sniper after him basically and his his aunt gets shot almost dies but this is a what if where aunt uh mary jane gets shot and dies and that makes spider-man go all evil to the point where he's beating beating up iron man like easily with the black suit on and then he kills the kingpin at the end of it so spoiler alert sorry guys (laughs) and it's just like a really dark like little short story. And I love what if comics. I think that that's a great, like I said, I think it's a great idea for them to try. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm, I'm, what's crazy is I want to see what happens. Like we need to see more for this stuff. I imagine it's like some of the Marvel related stuff. They're going to show more once end game like drops. Like they're going to start teasing that type of stuff. I think a lot of the C list characters from the, the MCU, like Scarlet Witch, the vision, the winter soldier, they have a more interesting future potentially on the streaming service. Then I think that, and I think that's what they're going to do. Some of their lower tier characters, I think they'll move to the streaming service, you know, whether it's because they got killed off and they're doing other stories with them. I don't know, but it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, so yeah. And of course, uh, I'll be talking about that whenever we get new information on the service. Uh, next, next story. Uh, speaking of Sony and Spider-Verse, Sony, Un- this is also from Slash Film, by the way, Sony's has the next seven years laid out for their Spider-Man universes in both film and TV. Sony is all in on their Spider-Man films after the success of both Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Venom. The studio has realized they don't necessarily need to rely solely on their deal with Marvel Studios to draw an audience. As a result, the studio has already planned the next seven years out for its Spider-related projects, not just on film, but also on TV. And they have an official name for it to boot, Sony's Universe of Marvel Characters. Uh, Variety has a profile on Sony where they talk with 
Sony Pictures Entertainment Chairman Tony Vinscara, and Sony Pictures Television Chairman Mike Hopkins about the shape of things to come within this story. Vinscara confirms that Sony has the, in quotes, next seven or eight years laid out as to what they're going to do with Sony's universe of Marvel characters, and that will not only be on the film side, it'll be on the TV side. Um, he also adds, our television group will have its own set of characters from within that universe that we will seek to develop. So this, of course, is... Now, a lot of people react to this and say, hey, how are they going to do this with basically just Spider-Man and Venom? Well, the thing with it is people forget, and for good reason, that Sony actually has a lot more characters from the Marvel uh, line of properties than people realize. They have close to, I believe like 700 characters. Now, that might seem like a tantalizing, fascinating number, but they're all, like, Z-list, you know, characters. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, like, before those movies came out, like, those level of characters that people have never heard of, and Spider-Man and Venom. Now, I think that, at first, I was like, this is silly. But it's not totally out of the realm of possibility that they can make this a thing, because bottom line is you have characters, you have properties, you have stories that you can use. And we live in a world where Captain Marvel is now a big deal. So, and before everybody gets on me, uh, breaking news, no, nobody knew who Black uh, Captain Marvel was like 10 years ago. Nobody knew who that was. Not really. Same thing with the Guardians. To an extent, same thing with Black Panther. He was more of like a B-minus tier, I would say. C plus, B-minus before the movies and before you know everything Marvel started blowing up. Those characters were not as huge. It used to be just Spider-Man and the X-Men. People forget that. Like early 2000s, those were the only ones that really mattered. You know, people kind of knew what the Avengers were, but they weren't, you know, Iron Man wasn't as big as he is now. Characters like that. So my thing is, hey, if Marvel, the MC, you know, Sony Marvel Studios can, or Disney Marvel Studios can do it, you know, there's not, that's not to say that they, that Sony can't do it. Now they haven't, they don't have the same track record, obviously. But I don't think people should dismiss this as how are you turning Spider-Man into all these movies? They still have a lot of characters to use from. And I heard that they're still doing another animated Spider-Man movie, this time featuring a lot of the female Spider-Verse characters, which should be interesting. And, of course, they're doing a Venom sequel. I don't know. I'm not totally as cynical about this as others online have been about it, but I'm still... It is, it's a fair complaint to be like, hey, like, this is, this is silly. You know what I mean? Like, you're, gonna try and, you're trying too hard to be like Marvel. So we'll see what happens with that, but I don't know. Like I said, Spider-Verse is awesome, so if they make more movies like that, I'm good. I'll take everything, I'll take all the baggage that comes with it, as long as we get more of those. You know, so that's it. And more Marvel news, guys. Sorry, but that's just that's just what it is these days. James Gunn, this is big news when it happened. James Gunn was rehired for the Guardians of, Gal- or Guardians of the Galaxy sequel. Um, reading from CNN. Disney has reversed course on its next flight for Guardians of the Galaxy, reinstating writer-director James Gunn to oversee the third movie after firing him last year in the wake of learning about offensive social media posts. Gunn had been targeted by conservative activists, in part because of his vocal criticism of of President Trump, who resurfaced old tweets in which he made light of pedophilia and molestation. In firing him, Disney labeled the comments indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values. Although Gunn apologized and issued a statement saying, in quotes, I understand and accept the business decisions taken. There was almost immediately a backlash on the director's behalf, with supporters claiming that the studio had overreacted and moved too precipitously, precipitously to sever ties. Those urging the studio to reconsider, which fostered the hashtag We Are Groot, drawing from a character in the films, including members of the Guardians cast, as well as other Hollywood figures such as actress Selma Blair. A Change.org petition to rehire James Gunn amassed more than 200,000 signatures. So here's the thing. I let's let me talk about this carefully. Here's the thing. When you talk about this, this is not this is not an acceptance of what James Gunn said on Twitter or whatever. The reason why I was upset why he was fired. Yes, he made some some bad jokes. But also they were from a while ago. If I'm not mistaken, they were back in about ooh, I'm going to say 2011 is when he made these these tweets. I'm not a fan of this whole movement of going backwards on Twitter to see what everybody did. Not necessarily to see what everybody did, but for punishing them harshly for what they did in the past. Because if you want to do that, pretty sure everybody's got something. Can't find anything for me because I already deleted everything, if there was anything. (laughs) Just saying. Not to, you know, weird flex, but okay. And with James Gunn, it was something that not only was from a while ago, but it was also something that he had apologized before, even before he was hired by Marvel. 
So my problem with this is that it was just a mob mentality thing that got him fired. It's it seems if they didn't care, it's either that they didn't care that he had these old tweets when they hired James Gunn, or it's because they didn't properly vet him. One or the other. I choose to believe the former between the two. That's just me. That's just how I think. I don't think people care. That's just what it seems like that people are caring when people lash out. And the article mentions a conservative kind of campaign. That's somewhat true. It is true that that's who brought it up in the first place. Well, I believe it was Mike Cernovich was the person, or Jack Fosave, one of those idiot, super far right um, conservatives. Not that all conservatives are idiots. There's very smart conservatives out there. I'm not trying to say that, guys. These are like really awful, just totally deplorable people, in my opinion. And they kind of just brought up these old tweets, and it's just like, what are we doing? And I saw some people complain that, well, now people see what it's, now the left understands what it's like. You know what I mean? Like what happened with Roseanne. Now, Roseanne, I hate when people use that as as a proper thing. You can bring up baseball players like Josh Hader, with ha- instance with that that happened over the summer, as a, a proper equivalency. But Roseanne's completely different because Roseanne got fired for what she said that day on Twitter. She was fired after something she said that day. Not for something she made before. And that's my problem is that Disney clearly is only caring about the backlash. And if that is the case... I just don't like that, this draconian, absolutist kind of approach that we have. I'm just not a fan of that. So I'm really happy that they hired him back for that. He already made his apology, and let's like let's try and move on. Things have things have changed. And I've said this on the show a lot of times. I used to use the F word, for the, the gay slur, a lot on Xbox Live. I didn't know what it means. I didn't mean it in term, in, to make fun of gay people. I used to call things I thought were stupid. I used to say, oh, that's gay. Like, that's what people used to say. And I didn't know what it meant. I just said it because everybody else was saying it because I was a dumb kid, you know, and we learn, we move on, we, we, we evolve, you know, and things were different back then. And I think that we have to keep that in mind as, hey, look, look how far we've come. You know, there was a lot more racist people, openly racist people in the 60s or whatever, in the 50s, 40s, whatever. You know, just look at some best picture winners. <laughs> just look at um, uh, Birth of a Nation, for example. Things have changed a little bit, and I think that it, it's it's wrong to be crucifying people for these things. Now, if they want to, if you bring it up and they want to be like, I'm fine with it, you know, I stand by what it said, then that's different. But I think people do deserve kind of a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. I also think that people who believe in these awful things, they will find a way to mess up again, a la the Roseannes of the world. We didn't crucify her as we, we got upset when she was hired by Disney. By we, I mean, I'm not saying me specifically. We're upset that she got hired by Disney. But my thing when that happened was, if she really is as mean as her tweets suggest and as racist and hateful as her some of her past um, remarks on Twitter suggest, it'll come out again. That's just kind of what I what I believe. Not always the case, but I just think people will find a way. They're really that racist and, and evil and, and sexist or misogynistic or whatever. So that's what happened here. I'm glad he's back. I thought it was a mistake by Marvel to potentially put their Guardians universe at risk for something like this. Just didn't make a lot of sense to me. And here we are. You know, he's back. A lot of people were excited about this. I am too. Production's going to start in 2021 for Guardians 3, so it's going to be quite a while before we see the next movie. But it's still cool to see that it's back. You know, we're probably going to get this in like 2022. Um, and we'll have to see what happens in Avengers Endgame to see where even the Guardians are. You know, what's what's going to be happening? we got Rocket Raccoon left, but that's it. So yeah, that's that's it for that story. Went on a bit of a tangent there. Uh, the next story from the DC side, a lot of superhero-related stuff, guys. Sorry about that, but hey, it's just what it is. Um... This from Hollywood Reporter, Flash Shocker, Ezra Miller writing script in bid to stay on as the star. But wait, that's not all. The actor is penning the script with Superstar Comics author Grant Morrison. Reading from, like I said, The Hollywood Reporter, in a bid to keep himself involved as the Scarlet Speedster, actor Ezra Miller is taking a hands-on approach to The Flash. Miller is taking a stab at writing the script for the Warner Brothers project, The Hollywood Reporter has learned. He has teamed with Grant Morrison, the acclaimed comics author, to pen a draft that that could determine if he stays on as star playing crime fighter Barry Allen. The development has bubbled up from a clash of creative visions. John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, who have been on board the project since January 2018, have taken a lighthearted approach to the material. And even hail from that sort of background, with credits like Spider-Man Homecoming and Game Night. And, as other sources note, that is the general track favored by Warners, which scored a billion-dollar hit with Aquaman by going the fun spectacle route and is seeing strong buzz on Shazam, which is wearing its superhero and quotes super heroics is fun on its sleeve miller said to also want to take a darker take on the material 
So the the report you can check out more of it from Hollywood Report is basically saying that there's like a lot of creative clashes right now. It's really weird that they that they're gonna have a Shazam movie out, no problem almost, almost no problem. There's been some production weirdness, and then they can't get a Flash movie made. I just don't understand what happens with this universe. We have Aquaman, we have, and it's like not to bash Wonder Woman, but it's like we have we had Wonder Woman finally come out. Then we're having Aquaman, Suicide Squad stuff, but there's no new Batman movie in this universe they've tried to make. There's no new Flash movie, no new Green Lancer movie. It's just weird that there's some characters that they're struggling with. And I take the approach that DC has not been able to properly write dark um, theme stories, so I think that this is a bad idea for them. I'm rooting for it because I think Ezra Miller is great. I love Ezra Miller. I think he's a really charismatic performer. And I thought he was pretty cool as the Flash in the movie. But bottom line is you can't really you can't trust the DC slate of films considering how they haven't really managed to do dark stories. Well, they just haven't, you know what I mean? The Batman B Superman justice league. What's another one? Uh, Suicide squad. Like all these movies really haven't been very good. Same man of steel to a degree. I just think that it's, it's, it's kind of a mistake, but if he's, I just like the idea that he's like, you know what? Fine. I'll write it myself. (laughs) I just kind of like that, that attitude of Ezra Miller. I'm rooting for the movie just because I think Flash is an awesome character, and it's just shocking to me that we haven't had a, a movie come out for him, a live-action movie in this age of superhero uh, pandemonium, I guess you could call it. I'm just kind of just shocked and on all levels that we haven't had a movie for that yet. Same thing with I was shocked that we didn't have Wonder Woman come out until 2016. That was also shocking. But yeah, guys, moving on to the next story. John David, Wa- or I'm sorry, Josh Peck and Drake Bell. Finally, something different. All right, no more superhero stuff, guys. Don't worry. Uh, Josh Peck has spilled some details on an upcoming project with Drake Bell. This is from Entertainment Tonight, the online. Josh Peck's upcoming project with Drake Bell is not a Drake and Josh reboot. ET's kid correspondent Devin Trey Campbell spoke with the new dad at the 2019 Kids' Choice Awards in Los Angeles on Saturday, where he spilled work details on the collaboration he and Bell have in the works. I wouldn't call it a reboot, he said. I think it's just an opportunity for Drake and I to be working together again. Obviously, we love each other, and we were able to make such an impact on people with Drake and Josh. So any chance to do something dope together, it's really exciting for me. It's going to be good. Y'all will like it, he added. So speculation has been basically boiling over the last week or so, last couple weeks, actually, where they've been teasing a new project that they're working on together. Cool. <laughs> I, I think Drake and Josh is great. I actually rewatched it last semester during finals week. Don't tell anybody. That's what I was doing in my spare time. And it still holds up quite a bit. It's still funny. I like it a lot, and I don't think we need a Drake and Josh reboot, but I like the idea of the two of them working together. It's just an exciting random story that I wasn't expecting, especially since the two of them, at one point it seemed, uh, about like a year or so ago, like had like a little bit of a falling out, like very publicly over um, Twitter and Instagram and all that. So that was interesting, but looks like they made up to a degree. So that's really exciting. Um, and the last story from movie news, I've got a lot of news today, guys. A lot of news today, but I'm just, you know, just trying to, just trying to talk because I got nobody here. It's just me all alone. Um, reading from Entertainment Weekly. Christopher Nolan has casted John David Washington to lead his next movie. Like I said, reading from Entertainment Weekly. Fresh off his feature film Breakout and Spike Lee's Black Klansman, John David Washington will be starving, starring not starving, in Christopher Nolan's next big screen spectacle, EW Has Learned. A source tells EW that Nolan's next movie, which has yet to unveil a title or plot details, will be a massive, innovative action blockbuster made for IMAX again like the filmmaker did for his 2017 World War II epic, Dunkirk. Warner Brothers has scheduled the film's release for July 17, 2020. Variety broke the news of the casting. Washington, 34, a former football player and son of Oscar-winning Denzel Washington, broke out on HBO's Baller series in 2015, in which he plays Ricky Jarrett. Last year, Lee, has, Lee said he only considered Washington for the role of Ron Stallworth, a black police, op- police detective who infiltrated a local Ku Klux Klan chapter in the surreal story Black Klansman, and Washington earned strong reviews for his performance. Um, this doesn't say this in the article, but also Robert Paddington has been cast as the, the co-star for the movie as well, which is like, super exciting. I think Robert Paddington is an incredibly underrated actor who unfortunately just kind of has the stain of the Twilight movies attached to him, which isn't all his fault. You know, and I think he's just a really great actor. I recommend everyone seeing Good Time. It's a great, great movie. I think he's a great actor. I really do. And I think that it's a shame that he, you know, hasn't been able to shake that Twilight stench just yet. But maybe this will help do that. Maybe this will bring him back into the forefront. 
So yeah, next Christopher Nolan movie. You don't know what it is. John David Washington's stock is going way up. He's been great. I didn't see Black Clansman, but I did see Ballers, much to my dismay. I hated that show. I saw the first two seasons over the break one time. Hated, hated, hated that show. Refused to watch the next season. And he was pretty good in it, for sure. I, I definitely liked his performance. And I heard good things about Black Klansman as well. So really cool to see um, him getting another shot. And I'm looking forward to seeing what next, Nolan's next movie is about, as I assume we all are. He's one of the few directors I can think of where just the name Nolan, just the name itself automatically makes people interested in what the, what the project is. No property. doesn't matter what the property is. doesn't matter what the story is. As long as you know, hey, it's Christopher Nolan. Okay, by default, it's going to be an anticipated movie. But yeah, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we get back, we're going to go through some gaming news. All right. And then my reads of the week. Those are back. I didn't have them the last show. But don't worry. I have some reads of the week this time. So stay tuned, guys. You're listening to 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And we're back, everybody, here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. Just got through some of the movie news. Now we're back doing gaming news. That's right. The part that nobody cares about except me. And I do it to entertain myself, essentially. It's okay. If you do care about it, then I'm, I'm glad you do, like me, because you're a nerd like me. Hopefully, if you're listening to the show, you are. I don't know. Here we go. Let's go. Get started. First up, one of, the, one of the great announcements. There was a lot of cool announcements last week, let me tell you. Gaming had a lot of stories, too, guys. There's a lot of stuff. But one of the, just, it, it just filled my heart with joy. There are actually two things that filled my heart with joy. Or three. Actually, four. Now that I look at, f- actually, five. Yeah, never mind. All right, let me just get to it. Castle Crashers Remastered is coming to the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. Reading from App Trigger by me, yourself, yours truly. I am um, now a, a, a part-time contributor for this website, writing about video game stuff. Um, if Conquer the Squirrel and Deadpool had a baby, chances are it looks something like a game from the behemoth, cartoon aesthetic and all. In other words, they're an easy studio to root for, starting from simple Flash game roots on new grounds. The talented developer has left an indelible mark thanks to a plethora of truly unique titles. And one of those inimitable titles would be the beat-em-up masterpiece known as Castle Crashers, which first launched for the Xbox 360 back in 2007 as part of the Xbox Live Summer of Arcade event um, initiative. Now, the remastered version of the game, which came to the Xbox One and first in 2015, is making its way to the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, which the behemoth announced today in a blog post today as in a week ago. Wow. Awesome news. Castle Crashes is one of the first games I remember playing online on Xbox Live. This is back in like something like my, my sophomore year of high school, maybe something like that. Not even. I think a little bit before that. And I remember playing. I actually played it with my sister. It was, it's just such a great game. It's such a great co-op game. And having it on Switch just seems right. It just seems like one of those games that fits in every way, every type of way. And if you haven't played Castle Crashes before, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. It's just a fun, stupid, beat em up game. And I think that it's been, I know a lot of people, I know my friend and I, we've been wondering, like, we wish that they had a sequel to Castle Crashers, which is something that they probably could have done. They probably could have done a bunch of sequels to Castle Crashers, but they didn't. They moved on to other projects. By they, I mean the behemoth, the developer, like Battle Block Theater and Pit People. And it's just, it's just really cool news. It's coming sometime during the summer, um, this summer, 2019. We don't know when exactly, but it is coming. And I'm really excited to play it. I really can't wait to see what that looks like on Switch, especially, which I don't know which console I'll get it for, but it's definitely something that'll get me going into buying an online service, meaning either getting Nintendo online or getting uh, my PlayStation Plus back. This, believe it or not, is going to be the thing that drives me to do that. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for that. Another new, another great announcement that's super, super exciting. Another game. Another fantastic game. One of the great games. My favorite game. When it came out this year, Cuphead is coming to the Nintendo Switch with Xbox Live support coming. Reading now from The Verge, yet another big name indie game is on its way to the Nintendo Switch. This time, it's the brutally hard Cuphead, the run and gun platform game. First launched back in 2017 as a Microsoft, Microsoft exclusive, debuting on both the Xbox One and PC. During the announcement today, Nintendo specifically called out, in quotes, our friends at Microsoft for making the port possible. While it's arriving late, Cuphead's retro style seems to be an ideal fit for Nintendo's tablet, particularly the painstakingly hand-drawn 1930s style art. Even more interesting, Microsoft says that Xbox Live support is coming to the Switch version. In quotes, we'll be working with Studio MDHR to implement Xbox Live features into Cuphead on Nintendo Switch in the coming months, the company said in a post on the Xbox Wire. 
The news comes less than a week after Xbox Live support came to mobile. Cuphead will come to the Switch on April 18th. That's right, it's coming soon. Can't wait for this, man. It's going to be a great thing to have before Avengers Endgame comes out, let me tell you. Can't wait to play it again. I love it. And actually, it was, I'll get to this a little bit later, it was, uh, I may or may not have written something for the Montclair that had to do with this game. We'll get back to that later. So yeah, this is a very special game to me. Brutally hard, but it feels like the, the difficulty was supposed to be as such. It was supposed to be hard because you get better the more you kept trying at a certain boss or level, and that's what I liked about it. It didn't feel like it was hard for hard's sake, meaning it didn't, because I've discussed this on the show before where some people say games are a little bit too easy these days. They hold your hand too much, and that's, that's true. And then they say they, they romanticize the games that were harder back on the NES, you know, the, the, 90, the 90s era of gaming, like Ghosts and Goblins and Castlevania and, and, and what's that other one called, and, and, and Ninja Gaiden, you know, stuff like that. And what I don't like about that is the reason why a lot of those games were hard in my opinion, from what I've played of them, because I've played quite a lot of games in my day, both new and old, a lot of the reason why some of those games were hard is because of mechanics and not because of good gameplay level design necessarily. There's great level design, but a reason why Ghosts and Goblins was so hard was because it was like two hits, you die, and if you die three times, and that's it. That's why that game was so hard, because you have two hits, and like that's it. Silver Surfer, a game that isn't good, at least Ghosts and Goblins is good, that game was impossibly hard because it was one hit and you're done. That's it, the end. So you see what I'm saying? It's you're installing these peripheral kind of, um, um, what's it called? Parameters and and consequences and whatnot that isn't based on how well you actually de- design a level. That's why I feel like Cuphead. It's just designed really well, and you, it doesn't take just a few hits. You can retry as long as you want, and you'll eventually get it. It's not like the game has a I wouldn't reward a game for being, man, that's hard, if it, if Cuphead was, if you die once, then you got to restart the whole world again. You know what I mean? Instead of just a level, and then you get to keep playing. That's just stupid to me. You know? Anybody can do that. You know? Ninja Gaiden has just a bunch of levels in there that are ridiculous. Now, that game's not the best example. That one's a little bit more fair. But it just has some impossibly, stupidly designed things that are kind of impossible to get by. You know? So I don't like it when people kind of romanticize this older era of games being harder and more of a challenge. They're still challenging games today, but they figured out, hey, let's like have side options. Let's make it that you can actually beat these things, and we're going to actually design them well. Dark Souls is like that, too. Although Dark Souls has a lot of baloney in it, too. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, that's kind of a side tangent. Really excited for Cuphead to come back. Going to be playing it definitely on the Switch, and I'll be talking about that at some point, seeing how it, it plays on the Switch. I'm really excited for that. Um, another game announcement. Turtle Rock, the studio behind Left 4 Dead, has announced a new co-op zombie shooter, Back for Blood. Reading now from Polygon, the studio that developed the original Left 4 Dead is developing what sounds like a spiritual sequel, Back for Blood, described as a cooperative shooter against hordes of zombies. In other words, it sounds like the Left 4 Dead follow-up that Valve still hasn't delivered. And that is right. For those who haven't played Left 4 Dead, I highly recommend it. Um, one of the great co-op games, in my opinion, ever made. And what I love about Left 4 Dead is it is so bare bones. It is very simple. It is just you and three other characters fighting against zombies. It sounds, it's very bare bones. There's not too much content. There's only like four or five maps in it. But that content in it is so great because the AI and the level design and all that in that game is absolutely phenomenal. Um, It's smart AI and it's hard and it's always changing. That's what, what I love about Left 4 Dead. You're never going to have the same experience despite playing on these levels. You're never really going to have the same experience twice. They're going to spawn from different places. It's a technical, like underneath its layers, it is un- unbelievably well designed. And I haven't played Left 4 Dead in a while. I remember I played with my sister. on it, Like when I first got Xbox Live, I played Left 4 Dead 2 with her um, one of my first times playing. And we got the gnome achievement, which was like you have to pick up this gnome and hold it for the entire level. And all you can do is swing in and hit people. So I had her and her friends like helping, basically protecting me so I could get this achievement. I remember that being a thing. I don't know why we did this, but it took a while and it was fun. And I, I, I hold that achievement closely. You know, It means a lot to me that I have that achievement and not many other people necessarily do. Um, that was a lot of fun. So yeah, a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. Awesome stuff. And I can't wait to see, see what happens. I can't wait to see it come out. Uh, the next um, story on, on our little slate here, No Man's Sky Beyond, also reading from um, Polygon. No Man's Sky Beyond update is bringing radical new multiplayer components this summer. 
Hello Games today announced plans for the next chapter in its spacefaring adventure. No Man's Sky Beyond will be released this summer. According to Hello Games' managing director, Sean Murray, the free update will include three main components. The first is No Man's Sky Online, which brings major changes to the game's current multiplayer mode. And there's there, there's a lot. I don't want to get into all of them, but because I haven't really played No Man's Sky, so I don't understand all of this. But No Man's Sky is, is a tricky game to discuss because when it came out and it was being you know previewed, and this is partially the fault of Sean Murray and how they, they kind of built up the hype, and it's kind of their fault too. The expectations for this game when it was coming out were way too high. People were thinking this is Star Trek, and this is like like Star Trek made into a game straight up. And it's the game to end all games, and has infinite possibilities and worlds. And the game came out, and it wasn't nearly like the way it was being demoed. The graphics were were um, down downgraded a lot, it looked like. There weren't online space battles, but the game sold well, and it, it didn't receive the greatest of reviews. Some people like this, some people like the calmness of it, but a lot of people were like, this is this is awful, and that's because the hype was too high. And I remember that one of the things that happened is every time the game got delayed or anybody said anything bad about it, people just attacked those people. Sean Murray on Twitter just got attacked by trolls. Every t- When the game was delayed, when reporters, when announced the game got delayed, uh, trolls would attack them and just completely issue death threats and stuff like that. It was ridiculous. The The hype overload for this game was actually, it was just, it was too much, it was too great. And I think people's hype was was too high because Hello Games was kind of this indie studio that their previous game was Joe Danger, and it was staffed by like I think thirty people. And if people were expecting some Star Trek game to end all games, infinite exploration type of game, that was a mistake. Now it's also the fault of Hello Games for kind of not dismissing that hype, not cooling it off. You know what I mean? They kind of just r- ran with it, but they made a lot of money clearly from the game. And what I do respect, though, and this is objectively true, I would say is that they've kept supporting the game, and they've kept adding updates, and I heard the game is completely different now than when it first launched. So I respect that even though the game was kind of a disaster at launch, it wasn't nearly what people expected, and people gave them a lot of, you know, you know what for it. I respect that they stayed committed, and I like seeing that. I love it when you have those game stories in the gaming industry of titles that come out and aren't super impressive, but then they stay committed and they keep adding things to it, and then it blows up. Warframe is a game like that. It's like Ninja's space pirate bounty hunter things and that game is apparently a huge free-to-play game that doesn't really it's not pay to play or anything like that and the fan base for that isn't huge but it's committed and that apparently is a huge um huge game another one rainbow six siege is probably the greatest example of this that came out nobody cared they kept they kept at it kept releasing dlc and now it's one of the biggest like esports competitive games out there it's huge like that game's huge so big like and i'm shocked by that you know what i mean and that's what I like about it. Same thing with Fortnite. Fortnite had like a random multiplayer update, and that's what made it blew up. So I love I love seeing stories like that when developers, and it's not easy to do, but they stay committed, and then their project transforms into something even greater. So um, congrats to them, I guess. I might even pick up No Man's Sky. I might I might check it out just because I'm curious that people say it's legitimately changed, and it's just it's awesome now. It's like a huge, huge update, and they got an even bigger update coming out for free um, too as well. So really excited to see how that turns out. Um, next story, this one, this one just, this one just, just makes me happy, ladies and gentlemen. Reading from Forbes of all places, a magazine that I haven't respected lately due to their um, article on um, Kylie Jenner or Kendall Jenner, whoever it was, I don't care. That was a disgraceful article that nobody should read. Um, read like I said, reading from from Forbes, Gearbox is teasing a Borderlands three reveal coming very soon. It's crazy to think about this, but it's been nearly seven years since Borderlands 2 came out. That is, a, that is a long time. Back then, we were playing games on Xbox 360 and PS3, and PC, of course. Since then, two other Borderlands games have released, Borderlands the pre-sequel and Telltale's Tales from the Borderlands, both released in 2014. So that's five years since any Borderland content. And in that span, the loot shooter genre has exploded with games like Destiny, The Division, Warframe, and Anthem all cropping up and gaining fame and or infamy. Now Gearbox is teasing a Borderlands 3 reveal, and it's coming soon. The developer publisher tweeted the image below. You guys can check that out, obviously, if we're on air, so I can't show it to you. Um, and it's just a poster. It's a billboard that says Exit 3 on top, and then the main thing says March 28th, Boston, MA. So I imagine that since this says Exit 3, it's got to be Borderlands 3. Um, another thing that doesn't say at, um, through this through this um, article, though, is that another r- rumor is that they're going to be releasing Borderlands, the first game, as a remastered version. 
of the first game as an up res for like PlayStation 4 and Xbox Xbox One. And that I will be picking up immediately as well. So this is exciting. March 28th. That's just in three days, guys. Can't wait to see what they show. I've been asking for this game for a while, too. I love Borderlands. Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 1. And Loot Shooters, one of the problems and the complaints with them is that the story is never really there. The characters are kind of bare bones. And it's just kind of a busy... Loot Shooters are hard to explain. But Borderlands, the, the aesthetic and the personality and the characters in that game have always been really interesting. Even if the story isn't quite there, the characters are cool. Especially with the second game, which I loved. The villain in that game, Handsome Jack, is great. Well, there's all the stuff in that game. Like, There's really cool characters and fun personality to it that I think made it stand out. I still think there's time for them to come back into this genre, this loot shooter genre, as they call it. And I can't wait to see it. And if they re-release that first game, because they haven't actually re-released the first game ever, um, if I'm not mistaken, which is crazy to think about. Not even that collection, the the Handsome collection. I don't think they released the first game. It was just Borderlands 2 and then the pre-sequel, I think, as part of that. Um, I'd love to jump back into that game. It's And I played it by myself, too. That's what's interesting. Is this is a co-op-focused game. That's when really all the, the magic and all the fun stuff happens. I played these games by myself, though. And I still have a ton of fun. It's just a great game for me to kick back, relax, and go exploring and trying to get new, more powerful weapons and playing podcasts in the background. That's basically what I do. That's basically what I do. And it's 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 great. I love it. <laughs> so I'm really excited to see how that, that turns out, guys. Um... March 28th, can't wait. Uh, next story, there's a new Sonic game in development, <laughs> for better or worse. This is from Eurogamer. Uh, I'm reading it now from there. Takashi Izuka has confirmed the next main Sonic game has begun production. Talking at the XXSW Sonic panel this weekend, Team Sonic were keen to temper expectations. Apparently, we're unlikely to see anything concrete about the new installment until next year, but said the team, in quotes, will be excited to share some news with you in the future. But for now, thank you for your patience until we have something to show. The panel also revealed an all-new trailer for upcoming Team Sonic Racing, scheduled to drop on Nintendo Switch, PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on the 21st of May. Teaser offered a peek as the new customization opens, albeit ones that stop short at full character creation, sadly, as well as a little glimpse of the game in action. Players are able to tweak pretty much everything about their vehicle, from handling and defense to acceleration and paint finishes, and even the sound of your horn. So, that's cool. I don't care about so- Team Sonic Racing. Sonic the Hedgehog is one of those characters that um, I've had a complicated relationship with. You know, I love the original trilogy of games. I think those games are objectively great. And then his history has kind of been as popular as really a lot of it just stems from the character itself. And a lot of his games are quite bad. Sonic is very complicated. Very complicated. And, and a lot of people say he's trash. It's not an unfair statement to make. I do think the original games are great. The 2D side-scroller type of games, those I think are really objectively great. But Sonic Adventure does not age well. Um, First release for the Dreamcast and then GameCube and the DX Director's Cut. It was one of the first games I played on the GameCube, actually. I remember that. It does not age well. It is not a fun game to play. It looks ugly, but it is hilarious. I recommend people checking it out. It is one of the great unintentional, unintentionally hilarious games ever made. It's a good bad that's what I would describe it as. Like how I've described Deep Blue Sea before and Face Off. It's one of those that if you play through it, there are just some cutscenes and weird things as part of it. I need to talk about that game just in full detail one day. I should like play it live on the show one day because it's, it's really funny. Just the animations in that game are absolutely out of control. Um, as we just, um, like I said, guys, um, we're at the top of the hour here. Now, a 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair still talking about some, some gaming news. Uh, but we're going to move on from the, the Sonic stuff. To something a little bit more more interesting, uh, Google has announced a new gaming platform. For those that didn't follow, it's Stadia is Google's new streaming service for games. It's from CNN Business. Um, Google is not making a game console, like I said, reading from CNN. It is, however, launching a streaming service just for video games that will work on any TV with Chromecast, computers running a Chrome browser, and Google's Pixel devices. You don't download the games to your devices; just play them over any Wi-Fi connection. The Netflix-like product is called Stadia, that's the proper plural of Stadium, and expected to launch later this year with big-name titles including Assassin's Creed Odyssey and special YouTube features. Even without a console, it could help Google take on game industry leaders Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. Um, They announced and they went through this whole presentation. This is weird. Now, it's not a new console, like I said. It's more of a streaming service. I'm really curious to see how this plays out. I don't think a streaming service is necessarily... I don't think we're ready for that for video games. I think it sounds good on paper. 
I just don't know how this could work necessarily. It could be good. I'm just, I don't really, there's not any too much concrete details. It's a weird name for it too. I still do think though that Google is smart. They know what they're doing, obviously. Huge company of people for those who are unaware of that. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of thoughts on this. I didn't think about it enough, I don't think. But it's certainly worthy of, of being talked about. I think that a streaming service could be fun. And I think people should remember there are tons of tons of games out there that could work for this. The question is how many they can get the kind of the rights to and whatnot and kind of the approval of and whatnot to be able to play. I, I'm just I'm, I'm unsure. I'm unsure of what happens here is what I'd say. So I'm, I'm not even optimistic. I'm not even cynical. I just I don't know what this is going to look like. It could look a lot different when it finally launches, but it's definitely a story. And I'm very, very, very curious to see how it turns out. It's a fascinating idea that could really change the way video games are played, for sure. Um, next story, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order reveal um, via the EA, EA Star Wars uh, Twitter is apparently being teased for April 13th on a live stream. Uh, in the tweet, it says, in quote, join the head of Respawn Entertainment, Vince Sampella, and game director Stig Amason to be the first to learn about this holiday's highly anticipated action adventure game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. 1, 3 p.m. Central Time on April 13th, and yes, there will be a live stream. So this is exciting. It was the they teased this back at E3 this past year. They literally all they said was what the title of it was it is the new game that Respawn's working on for Star Wars. And EA not in good shape right now. A lot of people are upset with them because they canceled um, a Star Wars game about a month ago. For for it, it got shut down, and basically all they've put out with this Star Wars license are two shooters, Battlefront and Battlefront Two, which are games that have a lot of problems, especially with microtransactions and whatnot. You could go up all. You could all look that up yourselves, and a lot of really bad press followed those games. Not to mention, they're just not great. I played them; they're fine, they're good, they look beautiful. There's no doubt, but it's just kind of crazy that in like eight years, this is the only content that they've put out with that license, or six years, I think. That's just insane. Back in the day, we used to get more Star Wars games than this, and not just multiplayer-focused online shooters. You know, there's so much possibility with this universe that they're not really taking advantage of. So yeah. Um, moving on to our last story, I'm still looking forward to what happens with that April 13th announcement. Sony State of Play. What does that mean? Oh, it's a big thing. Reading from The Verge, Sony will stream new game announcements on March 25th in State of Play broadcast. That's today. Wow, I didn't realize that was today. Sony, that's 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So that'll be right when I get out of class. Oh, boy. Uh, anyway, reading from The Verge, I'm, I'm breaking news to myself right now. Sony has announced that it'll be running a new State of Play stream on March 25th, where it'll announce new games, show off new trailers, and give updates on upcoming PS4 and PSVR titles. If that sounds familiar, that's probably because it's the same thing Nintendo has been doing for the last few years with its Nintendo Direct presentations. Distributing news throughout the year instead of lumping all of its announcements together at a single big event like E3. It's a strategy that makes a lot of sense for Sony, which skipped its annual December showcase last year and has already said that it'll be sitting out of E3 come June, allowing it to give updates on upcoming titles with less of the pressure and fanfare that those larger events demand. State of Play won't be a one thing either. Sony has already said that it'll be running more State of Play streams later in 2019, so expect similar announcements like this in the future. So what what I can say about this is I've talked about E3. I was very sad that Sony wouldn't be going to it. However, however, I do think this is kind of the future for these things that they should all be taking the Nintendo Direct route. It's just easier. And it basically means that we'll be getting multiple mini E3s throughout the year that we can look forward to these fun announcement things. I don't necessarily think that we need these big conferences. Now, I, I'm nostalgic for it because I've been watching E3 streams like a nerd online ever since I was in like middle school. I always tune in for Sony's and I usually always turn into the other ones because I just love making predictions. There's just a lot of hype around it and it's fun to, to guess what could happen. Especially in Sony's case, which just got a lot bigger. You know what I mean? They've really just killed E3 the past couple of times they've been there. And, you know, so a lot of people are upset that they're not going. I think they'll be back at E3, but for now, I like the idea of maybe we don't need E3 because there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. It's harder to organize. You have to do this whole stage presentation. I like stage presentations because I think that's part of it, part of the fun of judging who has the best conference is seeing how they handle it and how epic it can be and whatnot. I just think there's something cool that, the Nintendo Directs are really exciting and they can do it well, but I like the idea of just the, there's something to that live presentation that I like a lot. But I won't miss it a lot if this is where the industry starts heading with Nintendo Directs and Microsoft Directs and EA Directs and all these things. It just means that we're getting more E3s in a way. 
albeit in smaller fashion and not all kind of stacking on top of each other in one event. I think that's better for just having a more spread out type of calendar. I think that's a better strategy, actually. So I'm really excited for this. Definitely going to talk about it next week, what they show. Obviously, hoping for some stuff on The Last of Us Part 2, maybe some, you know, release date would be cool. My most anticipated game currently, Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, all these type of games. A lot of Sony exclusives or anything or, or any new announcements would be cool, too. Looking forward to it, though. Hopefully, it's not just a boring little, uh, here's some a couple things. Hopefully, it's like there's going to be at least one or two things that are really exciting that they have coming out. Uh, but looking forward to this, it's right after my class. I can't believe that. I thought this was April 25th. I guess I read that wrong. Um, but yeah, state of play. Can't wait. We'll be talking about it next week, guys. Um, and that's it. That is it for the the, the opening dash. <laughs> I shouldn't call it the opening dash. I should just call it the news roundup this week. Um, because my ADJ did not come in. I didn't have as many topic possibilities as I wanted to. But still. Um, oh, I forgot. I forgot, guys. Not done yet. Reads of the week. That's right. We got reads of the week, all right, where every week I recommend a bunch of articles that I suggest people checking out. Um, the first one up is by me for a website called App Trigger. Like I said, I'm contributing. It's part of the fan sided uh, network, it's one of their affiliate sites. Think of it as almost like what SB Nation does, what's the sports blogs where they have different ones, or Barstool Sports where they have like different, you know, websites that handle different topics and whatnot, all part of one kind of conglomerate. And I'm going to be writing about video games there. And one of the things I did over the spring break was I reviewed the new One Piece game, One Piece World Seeker. You can check that out, guys. I really had a lot of fun doing it. I got the game early as part of that. Was, it was uh, I got a copy of the game early as part of purposes for a review. And that was kind of like secretly a kind of a dream come true. Just the idea of playing video games for a work related thing and, you know, getting him early, too. I got the game like four days before everybody else got it. And I was playing it. It's cool. Like the trophies don't sync up. So it doesn't show me playing it. And I loved it. And I loved writing the review. Um, I was proud of it for the most part. And you could check out what I thought of the game. Um, I'm not a huge One Piece guy. I frequented the show somewhat, like a little bit, but definitely not in order because it's so long. And this is like this franchise is huge. It's like 830 episodes deep. And they're still maybe only three quarters of the way done. So I'm not totally familiar with it. But I was just curious because I, I like anime stuff. And I was curious to see what an, this thing would be like as an open world game. Because most anime properties are translated into uh, fighting games. You know what I mean? Usually just fighters. That's usually what you get. Every now and then you get something different, but it's a lot of fighting stuff. Um, so I reviewed that. Um, so I recommend checking that out. Um, next up, every Montclarian article. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, the Montclarian won a lot of awards last week as part of the um, NJPF College Newspaper Contest. I'm going to read from Montclair right now. February started the Grammys and the Oscars, but March is reserved for the New Jersey Press Foundation. New Jersey uh, college newspapers select their best articles and news stories during a one-year time period. Anything published from March 1st to February 28th was eligible for nomination. And all the winners were announced. Montclair saw numerous, numerous awards in this contest, landing six first-place awards, one second-place awards award, and two third-place awards. First place awards were given to the Montclairian in news writing and feature writing categories with Cold Consequences, The Aftermath of Montclair State's Snowy Nightmare, and Tales of Hijabi Women, How a Scarf Can Impact Everyday Life, respectfully. The arts and entertainment critical writing and web project categories also won gold for the Montclairian with Orson Welles, The Other Side of the Wind, A Great End to His Cinematic Career, and Jewel, The Flavored Flash Drive Frenzy, respectfully. Uh, student artist profile Joe Baez also won third place for web project. A second place one was given to Moldy Montclair State Makes Mighty Mistake for Editorial Writing. So you guys can check out all these things on the website. I know all the people who wrote these or did worked on the projects. They're awesome. This is huge. It's like the most awards that the Montclair has ever won. And I'm glad to be have played a small part as being one of the assistant entertainment editors there. Really awesome stuff, guys. And as always, I like I, I keep telling you guys to check out the paper. It's great stuff. You know? Really great stuff. And speaking of the paper, my last read of the week, I mentioned that Cuphead was coming back to Switch, so I wanted to throw it back to the first ever article I wrote for the paper, which was like a year and a half ago now. Um, Cuphead is a dazzling homage to 20th century cartoons by me. It was my review for the, the Cuphead game, and I was like the only person who ever wrote about video games for the paper. And it was fun. I loved writing the piece, and you can check out my thoughts on that game. you know. And I stand by my, my stance that it was my favorite game of that year. I just thought it worked on every level, and it's one of the more unique platformers ever made for sure particularly in terms of its aesthetic so yeah guys that's it for the the reads of the week and officially the opening dash and all the news stuff that's basically what today's show was kind of just a big news recap me talking by myself 
about all the stuff that's happened in gaming and movies and reading and life and stuff. It's just what I wanted to do. But yeah, guys, um, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then when we get back, we're going to we're gonna talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 for a little bit, take a little bit of a break, and go over that a little bit, my thoughts on it. I finished it about a week and a half ago, actually two weeks ago. I finished it, and I have some thoughts. And let me tell you, they're not all good. So stay tuned, guys. Listen to 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And now that we're back after that big break, we're talking Kingdom Hearts 3. Just went through a bunch of news stuff, basically. For That was basically the most of today's show. Today's show was just free and loose, just going for it, like I said. Um, and hopefully, maybe have a little bit more structure next week. That's, that's what I'm planning to do, a little bit more structure next week. Because as you guys know, I like to have a little bit more structure with my shows. But now, let's get right into it. And, and oh my gosh, wait, he's back. Is this, whoa, hold on. He's back. Big Boy Gabs is back. How you doing? I just received uh, some news from uh, from your illustrious host. Huh. Saying that uh, I am now tied with my husband for the most appearances on this show. Yes, with nine. With nine. Nine? nine? Seriously? Yes, nine. It doesn't even feel like nine. It doesn't. Well, because there's been some times when you've stopped by for like 30 minutes, but it counts. Well, no, the ones that don't th- count are thirty when you seconds. Go, Hello, and then you, no, like you, I've counted the ones where you were like on for like twenty, thirty minutes. Oh, really? I remember, the, remember when, dude? You have to think about it, like the Oscars draft. Remember, you were there for like twenty, thirty minutes. Yeah, but like you were on. You've been on a lot. I yeah, understand. Had the show for a while. I remember that. I know the one time over winter break mm-hmm. was one. This counted. Mm-hmm. That one was the last time I was on. Mm-hmm. Um. You were on for three times during NFL week picks. Do you remember when yes, that happened? Yes, that was that started last semester. That started last uh, semester. There's um, some that I don't have documented proof of on Twitter anyway, just because you just showed up sometimes, which was fine. Like for like the opening, you did that. But hey, I don't my the numbers don't lie, man. It's nine. But so these are like the like official ones, where like I have to be yeah. here for a set amount of time, or like ones where I just pop in and be like, hey, you're kind of dumb. I don't count those. Oh, okay. Because then that would have more people. Like when Molly like attacked me and stole my gum one time, that didn't mm-hmm. count. Or when Frankie stole my gun, whoever it was. Like, that didn't count. But I count all the times when people have been on for a sizable amount of time. Hmm. Yeah, man. Isn't, How does I don't, it feel? I don't remember. I How I feel about it is I don't remember the nine times I was on. <laughs> I remember those, the okay. NFL picks, the last two times I was on. And you had the show last year, too? I, think I had last it over th- the summer. So you're forgetting th- times over the summer you might have come on. I think you went. You came once over the summer. Maybe I did. I can't remember when it was over the summer, but I'm pretty sure. I could go back through my tweets, but that I know that you were on once over the summer. I think it was for, might have just been movies or something like that, or baseball maybe? Maybe it was baseball. Might have been baseball stuff. I'm trying to, or no, oh, you know what it was? The NBA trade deadline. That's what it was. That wasn't the summer. Oh. That's what I think you came on for, to talk about the deadline. Yes, it was yeah. to talk about yeah, trades yeah, yeah. and signings and That's stuff. That's one of the ones. This is fun thinking about, but yeah, man, you've been on a lot. Yep. Well, Crazy, if I come man. on... Any more times, I'll be the official. You'll be the leader. I just leader. texted Rob about it. We'll see if he wants to defend his throne, or if he'll just gladly concede it, or if he just wants to make sure that he's tied with you. Who knows? He is your hubby. I'd be, hubby I'd, be t- I'd be tied up with Rob any day of the week. <laughs> Do you take that? See what take that, sta- like take that, that statement for what you will, Rob. If you're listening, you know that I, I mean it in the most, the most husband way, husband way possible. It was a good way to put it. I like that. I cool. appreciate it. It's just I have I sometimes I speak good English, and sometimes mm, I don't. But mm, I'm better with mm. the writing, English. Yeah, I think I'm bad at both. But you have a, but you have a radio show. But I do for some reason. I don't know how this has happened. It just it just did. I really want. Can I call out someone on the radio show right now? Go for it. I want to call out Amanda Cease. I wanted a radio show for the <laughs> longest time, and I told her my my plans for it, and I did not get it. I didn't even get a notification as to when the ADJ program was starting. Oof. That's a shot. And she told me she would I tell will, me. I will forward that shot to her, actually. Honestly, please. I will. It's some it's some it's some tea that I wanted to spill. It's some shots that I wanted to fire. You should have just asked me to tell you when it was. You could have done it like last semester. You could well, have been on my show. Who truth knows? Truth be told, when um Oh man, what was his name? Um it's like sophomore year. Uh when Juan was the uh Station manager. I don't know if you knew him. Back yeah, then. I know of him though. Yeah, I did sign up for the ADJ program, but I never followed up with it because mm. I wanted to do so much. Mm-hmm. Now that I, because sophomore year I started living here, mm. I think that was the one I would drop, and I did newspaper instead. Mm-hmm. And now I'm here. So and now you're here. So you're still here. Though. You're still here. Maybe in some way. Maybe at some point some over uh, when I'm 
no longer at the school. I'll start up the uh, the podcast again. We like Ooh, I talked about the Cinema Dash. Yeah, if can not, I, can I be on? Um, I don't see why not. So, I'll t- <laughs> if one if we bring it back, you know, I was just yeah. an idea that we talked about the other day. Um, mm. when I was hanging out with him. So That'd the be father. Fun. You guys haven't done one in like two years, right? We haven't done the last one. We did. I think we did do so, record some for like Black Panther when that came out. So mm. like two. I think that was last year, two years ago, maybe. Um, but yeah, we haven't really done anything since that. We did that movie. We did, um, any movie that came out around then, before then, maybe something Oscar. You did based. Star Wars, I think. We did. We did do Star Wars. Uh, you we did, did. You did um the Last Jedi. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Who maybe I'm gonna check right now. Yeah, because that was um because Carrie Fisher died. Your last one was Bright. The Will Smith movie. That that's a that's an okay movie. It was it was ooh. It was something. It was. It was. A movie. It wasn't as bad as everyone was saying. I think, but that's. I, that's why I remember saying. Um, but I remember we did record. I don't like, think it was a garbage fest. I think there was. I think it was a potentially a good bad, mm-hmm. but it did take itself a little bit too seriously, especially towards the end. Maybe those will be lost episodes if we still have them somewhere. I, those yeah. are all on. D- one of uh, them uh, got a thousand uh, views. Your Moana, Moana one. Yeah, we, we talk about that all the time. Like out of all the videos, like that's the one that came out the latest. Yeah, and you would like, think that Star Wars would get the most. No, I think it's just because Moana was like at. Uh, had like a little bit of like the frozen hype for a little bit and to an extent oh, I, I know what you're talking about like the so, musical animated stuff like yeah that was like a thing i know what you're talking about yeah so i know exactly what you mean the yeah. analytics and stuff are are weird speaking of analytics shout out to uh little right montclarian now. update uh, oh yeah for what's up? um the article with the most views this week was adrian's article about pokemon uh sword and shield nice by a substantial margin compared to the okay. second the second most viewed article, which was Haley's, uh, our editor-in-chief's uh, article about the Montclarian winning nine total awards, right. six first place awards. Wow. Um, you should come on every week for that. For like an update at the if, end about the most viewed thing. I do get like uh, social media updates as to like what mm. articles performed really well that week and the best of the month so far. Um, but in terms of web analytics for that, I, you have to talk to our web editor, John. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of cool if that I, someone's writing about video games. That's not me anymore. It's kind of cool. We were talking about it because we have a good variety in the entertainment section now. But mm-hmm. I think that, you know, we would like our most popular articles of the week to not be something that's not about school. You know? Oh, you'd rather it be about school? Oh, yeah. Because if everyone. True. But that's hard. That's hard. It is. It is hard. But like, I'm also you like. You just put something with Avengers in it. That's clickbait. Yeah. Like, immediately. The traffic on anything Avengers related. I have insane. both. Like, I both agree and disagree with that statement hmm. because number one, you know, if we got people to look at news about the school, number everyone would be more informed, and it would be cool that you know we. Oh, all, I'm not saying that we all care about. Cool. Yeah. But also, like, if we got outside people to like see that we're doing articles and it's like it's just a student perspective. Yeah. Of that, whether it's about video games or movies or whatever, because mm-hmm. you know we do that anyway, and we've been doing that in that, in that section, but like. If people see that from other all across, you know, the country or the world, then people mm-hmm. will want to come here and do no, stuff. Yeah, I know. So I'm just saying that's why, like, it's harder because mm-hmm. no one's going to be necessarily looking up Montclair State University as much as Avengers Endgame Theory. Yeah, you know, it's just it's insane the the traffic on all those things. It's really ridiculous. You put Avengers, it's just automatically like a thousand views and whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, that's really exciting. Yeah. I mentioned you guys earlier for reads of the week. I ever mentioned every article that won. That was fun. Nice. Everything. Um, Shouts to everybody. Did you mention any sports articles? I did not mention it for this week, no. Right, so I'll mention them. So Go ahead. Go for it. So please, please my do. boy, so if this stays up, because I don't want to put hold in anymore. Um, so Christian Inga's article. Uh, okay. You see that? That was really cool. Yeah. Okay. So Christian Inga had an article about the Red Bulls season opener here. Mm-hmm. That was from, I think, like two I think it's two weeks ago now. Mm-hmm. Um. I put that into the section, so that's uh that's on in print, and then I also have Corey Anand's uh w- women's and men's swimming uh right, season right. recap, mm-hmm. which is blowing up on social because the actual uh, Montclair State swim teams are reposting that nice. on Twitter and nice. Instagram. So Corey does a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of good article. Has a lot of articles that blow up on social media mm-hmm. and online. Um, so you know that's great for us. So he's getting our more sports uh, exposure with that. So shout out to the two of them this week. I think I had another – I think I have some kind of web article. I don't remember what it was. It's probably something with sports or softball or 
or women's lacrosse or men's lacrosse, whatever it is, check out the sports section. Pick up a, a Montclairian piece, uh, newspaper. Um, this week is our last week of news for a good for a week because next week is the big joke one. It's the big the April big jokes the one. Big jokes. Big I love the April Fool's edition. It's always it's fun. the best one. It really is great. I remember even just randomly stumbling upon it. I think my sophomore year before I was even part of the paper. I just thought, I was like, oh, this is goofy. I have no idea what it even said. I can't remember. But then last year, I remember those, the Deadpool thing. Mm -hmm. I was Deadpool, by the way. I don't know if anybody Oh, I know. That. You remember that? Remember that whole, that disaster? Yeah. It was so obviously me because like, it was just this fat, like, kid dressed in red. I wouldn't say that. I would say I knew it was you just because I know who you are. <laughs> um, with that being said, um, a plan of mine for this year is to write something small for each section, like a 250-word joke mm -hmm. article for every section. Okay. And try to do a Photoshop for it. That's the dream. Mm -hmm. Will it actually happen? I don't know. We'll see, man. Maybe if I get cracked down on it on like a Saturday or mm -hmm. something. Like crack down the games? Or like you're going to crack down? Both. Okay. Terry Crews. Just me. Um, sure. uh, so I kind of want to do an article about uh, Rocky streaking uh, <laughs> on the baseball field. Okay. But I think I want to talk to like Mario or Taylor Risley because they're both on Team Rocky. Okay. And see if I can get like a picture a good picture of rocky with no shirt on mm -hmm. i still say my my sharif idea i think that'd be great what sharif idea <laughs> what him he holds the decapitated out of the other nominees for the entertainment no <laughs> i just thought that'd be hilarious i know we um, can't do that It'd just be funny <laughs> i thought of i'll do it myself how about that i'll do it myself it'll be my own thing and i'll share it with you guys for entertain for opinion i kind of want to do like everyone's gotten a Everyone, no, I want to do, um, for news, I want to do, everyone has an opinion. <laughs> okay. Breaking. Breaking, okay. That's fair. Everyone's got opinions. Everyone wants to share them. Mm -hmm. Local student says, he has opinions. Let's hear mm -hmm. his. Yep, here's one. That's it. I don't know. I will think about it more. Yeah, man. Over the I'm course excited. of the week. But then, I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's next Monday. Yeah. It's next right. Wednesday. This Wednesday, we will have normal news. Mm-hmm. Um, sports section will be lit this week. Um, got another red, red, red Bulls two article from Christian going in. Nice. Um, our Chris, our who is going to be our new social media guy, mm. manager. Uh, he wrote a freshman football transition article, a mm. freshman football player, talking about his tr move from high school sports to college to the college level. Mm. Which is a cool, interesting perspective, I believe. Um, and then I think I have. Uh, a baseball article written by Adam Grassani. Nice. You know Adam. Yeah. Everyone knows Adam here. He's the a big Kingdom thing. Hearts guy. Yeah. Yeah. Did you talk about that yet? No, I was about to. Oh. I didn't know you were coming oh, back. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I'll let you go it's, to it's fine. that. It's fine. So, You're good. I have no. plenty of time. So It's not like I'm going to say too much. You know? Oh, yeah. 16 minutes. I'll let you do yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Cool, so. man. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, dude. Yeah. It, was, it was really great because you haven't been on the show in a while. I mean, last time you were on was the Oscar fantasy draft, which was just you just sitting there. Not sitting there, but you were just like, "Yeah, go Rob." Well, I mean, <laughs> you were just like, "I have yeah, not, go Rob. I have not watched any Oscar movies." Dude, yet. I haven't either. I mean, so, well, well, I have, but I haven't watched anything new. I should say, I watched like Never Going Back over Spring Break, which is an yeah, A twenty four. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's so, not like an Oscar thing. I just watched it. Yeah, and Spider Verse oh, well. recently again, but nothing new. Yeah, I know. I haven't. Had, I hadn't really like sat down and just been like i'm gonna watch freshman and sophomore year me would totally be more up to date with the oscar movies and stuff mm. but now it's just kind of like i have work to do yeah me too especially with just yeah it's hard man we're both um, really busy so i'm gonna say this on air um go for it i don't i don't like news lab the class <laughs> journalism 480 <laughs> can eat me uh I, and i leave on that hot okay take. <laughs> bye mark Efron, i heard i hope you heard that okay I'll see you around, man. I'll see you. <laughs> okay, um, that was a shot. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know what to say. I feel like I should have dumped that. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, I didn't say. I do not approve of Anthony's takes. It's His opinions do not re represent my own or that of WMSC. I just want to throw that out there. But yeah, guys, um, that was really fun. Hey, I'm going to try and have Anthony more, more regular on the show to give better recaps of the paper. You know what I mean? Because I know more about the entertainment section since I'm an assistant editor, but since he's a main editor for sports, he knows like everything that's going on. So that'd be really cool. Guys, seriously, check out the paper. There's a lot of good stuff there. Um, I'm going to be writing something for the paper this week, too. So you can check that out for opinion. It should be really fun. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 for a little bit. 
Um, I finished the game uh, over spring break on the three minutes that I had that I was free. Thankfully, I was already almost done with the game. And I have a lot of thoughts. And when I talked about Kingdom Hearts 3, my first impressions, like earlier in the semester, when it first came out and how the gameplay itself was fine, it definitely felt better than Kingdom Hearts 2. Felt like there was more open space with the combat. And also, anybody who's who's listening, um, if you don't know anything about Kingdom Hearts, you're going to be lost, so sorry. It's impossible to talk about the franchise if you don't understand it in some... It's You, you can't recap it. Like, it's impossible. Literally impossible. You can recap Avengers. You can do everything and everything, but not this. Um, and I, I finished playing it. It took me, I think it was a 30-hour, like 28 hours, I think, to meet, beat the main story and whatnot. And all I have to say is I'm not disappointed... It's kind of what I expected, but I'm disappointed in the sense that this is really it. That this was supposed to be... This game has been in development. Or not necessarily in development, but it's been 13 years in the making, I should say. It's a little bit different than development. Ever since the first... Ever since Kingdom Hearts 2 on the PlayStation 2. This is the proper sequel, finally. Obviously, you had all those in-between games. Birth by Sleep. 358 over two days, which is the most ludicrous title ever crafted in the history of mankind. Uh, you know, Chain of Memories and RE Coded and Dream Drop Distance and all these in between games and the remasters that they released 17 times, which made me think that this game was really going to be kind of a finale. I didn't think that, I had a feeling, yeah, they're probably going to have more Kingdom Hearts games, but I thought this would really conclude the story and be like, all right, these guys, these characters are done. And spoilers spoilers are inbound uh first let me just talk about the game as a whole uh i don't think kingdom hearts 3 is very good i think from a gameplay perspective you could play a lot worse out there for sure but it is a lot it follows in the vein of kingdom hearts 2 which is a lot of button mashing and just pressing the same button over and over it looks cool and it feels kind of satisfying to play but when you actually break it down you're basically pressing the attack command all the time no matter what it looks like when you just watch gameplay videos you're basically just pressing that one button it's a little bit better in this game than Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2 is just straight up, just press X. That was it. This one, at least, there's a little bit more maneuvering around. Like I said, the environments are a lot more open. That's the best thing I could say about it. The The environments look beautiful. But, man, I mean, that gameplay, it's just at some point I was playing this and I was like, I just need to beat this just to beat it. Not because I want to, but just because I need to beat it for beating its sake. You know, just to have it finally complete and move on with my life. And it's really what I wanted to play the game for. I wanted to play the game because I was like, I need to move on from this. You know, I used to love Kingdom Hearts. When Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, I was so jazzed. And I liked that game when I was a kid. I still think the story kind of holds up, you know? And yeah, the dialogue got really cheesy and whatnot, but it's I still thought the story was pretty solid. And ever since then, they just quadrupled down on the cheesiness that it's not even, it's just ridiculous. The dialogue, guys, it made me want to pull my eyes out. I couldn't take it anymore. None of this makes sense on top of that. And some people, the Kingdom Hearts fans, will, will reprimand me for saying, well, you should have played all the other games. And I did play most of them. I shouldn't have to play and remember every single detail of every game to understand the basic fundamentals of what's going on. I understand that there's, I understand most of the things that are going on, though, not to say. But I'm just saying, in general, it just doesn't make sense what's going on. It feels like a story that was built like a, like a Jenga tower. And they never really... Not even like a Jenga tower. That's a bad example. They just kept going with it and making things up as they went along instead of actually having a master plan of where this series would turn out. And the ending of this game, spoiler alert, like I said, this is it. Spoilers for all the Kingdom Hearts guys out there. The ending is super anticlimactic. It ends, but then it has a cliffhanger, and it basically teases that one other guy was the bad guy all along or was a different villain all along. And that we're continuing it. Kairi, which is the main romantic kind of love interest, who's kind of like the Princess Peach of this franchise, goes missing. And the end of the game is Sora goes looking for her. We don't know what's going to happen. I think there's going to be DLC that gives more of an ending, if I'm not mistaken, to this. But for you to end this game, and then they, they add that it's like, well, let's... Like, there's this chess match between the two people that started it all. Think of it as like an Anakin-Obi-Wan type of dynamic. One guy went bad and one guy was good, and... They, 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 they start, it shows them as kids and they were playing this chess game of basically symbolizing how the whole events of the franchise again. I can't really explain it. If you've played it, you know what I mean. And then the end of the game, it shows that again. And I'm saying, but I heard about this new game with seven pieces. 
or whatever. And then the game ends. And I'm just, I was just furious seeing that. Because if you're going to tease something for 13 years, you're going to have HD 2.5, HD 2.8. Then you're going to release both of those for the, the complete saga. You know what I mean? And for you to do that, and to have any kind of cliffhanger that suggests that these characters will be back, like that there's more of a thing coming, I just think is insulting. Like, really? Really? You should have made it that so because clearly Sora's probably going to be back now. You know, he, he's looking for Kyrie again. And I'm just playing this. I'm seeing this ending. Like, you got to be kidding me. You're 13 years for this? Really? Really? And you released all... It just shows that they're milking... They're milking it. They're milking the heck out of this franchise. And it's not a great franchise. Is it admittedly cool to explore and see some of these Disney worlds like Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. and Frozen and maybe a little bit of Pirates of the Caribbean, which is actually one of my favorite worlds in the game because it was a really open world and whatnot, uh, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the game. But for you to... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just not good, guys. And I don't understand the pass that these games get for a lot of... Like, the dialogue is just atrocious, man. And the story is nonsensical and convoluted. And it ends in a way that is not epic. It feels completely safe. Doesn't feel like any resolutions really happen. It just basically says, we beat the bad guys. That thing we've been building up to, we beat it. Nobody dies. No major characters die at all, whatsoever. Kyrie goes missing. She's not dead. She's missing because of something that happens. And Sora says, I promise to go looking for him. And then all the characters are hanging out at the Destiny Island places, which is where the games all started. They're just hanging out, and that's basically it. And then they have this end post credit thing where it shows this one is Zigbar is his name or whatever. Spoiler alert, like I said. He was like this long-lost guy. And it, this ties into the prequel thing called Kingdom Hearts X, I think, which is like this mobile story that you can't even play anymore. They had to include it as a movie or whatever. And it, that ties back into that, which is something most people didn't play. And he's the real mastermind guy, I guess who took on a different form this whole time. And just seeing that, I'm like, are you, like, you got to be kidding me. You know? Like, you should have made this a very complete ending. But instead, it really ends on a cliffhanger. 13 years, that's what you're going to do? Are you serious? And not only that, there's, there's just nothing with this game. Why do I care so much about this franchise? Well, because the first game, I really think, is awesome. It's enchanting. I talked to my sister about this. The second game, not as much. Because the dialogue and story just doubles down and becomes ludicrous. The first game is enchanting. And Sora acting, even if the dialogue is cheesy in that game, it feels right. Because it's a kid. And it's starting out. And it's, you know, like it's the beginning. You know what I mean? But the story and that maturity doesn't progress whatsoever. There's nothing, like, Sora doesn't grow as a character really at all. You know, Riku does. His friend does a little bit. But even that, it's all cheesy and all doesn't make sense. And Keyblades, it's just out of control. Sora doesn't even have a reason for visiting worlds anymore. He's just visiting them in this game. You know? I believe Kingdom Hearts 2, there was a little bit more of a reason. This one is just straight up. He's just... They don't give you a reason. You're just exploring to eventually achieve the power of waking and, and getting your powers back or whatever. Because you lose them after the events of one of the tie-in games. He, like, loses all of his powers or whatever. Totally cliche thing to happen, but whatever. And... That, that's that's my issue, is that you, you dared to have a cliffhanger for something that you've been teasing. My hope for Kingdom Hearts 3 ever since it was announced, although when it was announced, I was a little bit more caring about the franchise, and when it finally came out, I wasn't. It was announced back in 2013, so yeah, six years later. I grew quite a bit. I was hoping that maybe it would be a little bit more nostalgic, and it would take you back, maybe, to the first game. Throwbacks to something, the things that made the first game special. And there's hardly any of that. If, there really isn't anything like that. It's just all about... If you're a fan of this ludicrous franchise, I guess you'll enjoy the game. It doesn't play particularly well. It's satisfying for some reason, but you're really just hitting the same button. I do like the form changes and whatnot where it's not wielding two keyblades now, but you're using like multiple uh, like forms. Like you change it into a hammer or these like claws and whatnot. That's kind of cool. And it, it looks beautiful. Like that's the best thing I can say about the game. Game looks beautiful. There's no doubt about that. But there's just moments in the game where I was like, was this supposed to be like an emotional big moment? Because it does not feel that way. It feels like the most safe ending for something that's been built up for so many years that I've ever seen. It is disappointing. And like I said, my hopes for the game were that it would be more nostalgic based. And that it would take me back to what made the first game so special. And be enchanting. And, and it's it's through the eyes of a kid. You know what I mean? You feel like a kid. And that's fine if the guy, dialogue's a little cheesy in the first game. Because it makes sense. And you really feel like you're exploring these 
there's this certain gravity and mystery and largeness. The game is actually bigger. The worlds are bigger in the first game, which is insane. I hate when that happens in franchises, when for some reason they go up one way but down the other way, especially in Kingdom Hearts 2. The pathways are so linear. In the first game, there's a little bit more exploration. There's, there's just more depth to the levels in that game. This one, there really just isn't that, and you hate Sora, you know, by the time you're done with it. It's just maddening. Voice acting's fine, I guess. I just think that the dialogue is just, oh my gosh. I mean, if you if you played the first Kingdom Hearts game, guys, and you weren't super in on this franchise heading into it, man, if you play Kingdom Hearts 3, you're just going to tear your hair out, you know? And that's what I was doing the entire time, to the point where I just skipped cutscenes. Not the ending, like the final world that you go to, which is, that's another thing about this game, no story updates, like, really happen. You're just kind of running around the worlds in this, and just beating levels and whatnot. Some of them, like Frozen, basically replays the plot of the movie. Toy Story doesn't really do that. Pirates doesn't. Um, what is it? Big Hero 6 doesn't. But I know that that Frozen definitely did, and uh, Tangled did. That was another world that's in this game. But playing this, like I said, it's just, what What are we doing? I really, guys, I don't know what to say. And I can't really talk too much more about it. I, I wish that I had someone else who knew more about Kingdom Hearts. But all I all I know is right now, I want to buy the first game again and just play that. Because first game's phenomenal. I really think it's excellent. And it has that Disney, like, interesting Disney thing. Everything else is just cheesy now. And I'm watching this, like, this friendship thing. It's just, it's not good anymore. You know? It's just not good. And the fact that it ends in such a way that is anticlimactic, in most respects, I should say, for them to even dare tease anything like that. If you tease something that didn't involve Sora and you you did it in a smart way that was saying, hey, Kingdom Hearts is going to go on. It makes money for us. That's fine. I knew that, was, that they were going to make more games. But to suggest that we're still going to see these characters again, so this is just one arc that's been done, it just feels incredibly cheap and, and just painfully boring. And I hope that the DLC that they're planning on adding in maybe... Um, uh, amends that concern I have, but I doubt it will. Uh, yeah, if you don't like this franchise, if you don't love this franchise, I should say, then do not pick up Kingdom Hearts 3. You'll be disappointed. It's okay to play. Seeing the Disney characters at some points are cool, but for the majority of it, it's just not It's just not worth your time. I'm sorry. And I was hoping, I was, I was hoping, like desperately hoping, that this game would be a little bit more nostalgic and take me back to what I loved about the first game more. Instead of being more like the second and button mashy and awful dialogue and cheesiness up the wazoo. Nope. That's what you get. So that's my that's my final thoughts on Kingdom Hearts 3. It's really not a good game in my opinion. Um, unless you're a super delirious kind of super fan of this franchise. Not to take too many shots at the wonderful people I'm sure are fans of this franchise. But that's just what it feels like. But yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. That about does it for today's edition of the Digital Dash Remember that you can always tune into the show every Monday from 10 to 1 p.m. here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, the iHeartRadio app. Next week, we'll be back. We'll be consistent again. I know I haven't showed up as much as before, meaning that it's been every other week that I've had the show the past month. Um, we'll be back. We're going to have some some cool guests on next week for sure that I'll be teasing on social media. If you don't follow me there, uh, please do so, and you'll you'll see some some things. I recommend doing that, and it's going to be great. Um, don't worry, guys. We're going to have the Digital Dash next week. Um, as always, to close things out, it's journey with separate ways, worlds apart. Remember, everyone, never accept the world for what it appears to be. Dare to see it for what it could be. I'm Javier Reyes, and hope you all have a terrific day. See you next time.